Hello friends. This is Muse Fan Affection. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto inherited the Forbidden Sharingan and adopted by Itachi? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. A little boy 8 years of age with spiky blonde hair, with blue eyes, and three whiskers like marks on each cheek, name was Naruto and he was running through the streets scared because a mob was chasing him. Get back here you demon! yelled a villager while holding a sharp knife. Die demon! screamed a shinobi with a kanai. More bloodthirsty screams of anger was heard soon after. Little Naruto ran through a small alleyway only to end up at a dead end and then huddled into a corner hoping they didn't see him come down through here. When they found him they all started laughing at what he was doing. Look, the demon is trying to protect himself, said a shinobi. Hehehehe, <laughs> too bad that won't work demon, said another shinobi. They all then started stabbing him, cutting him, and beating him like a bunch of wild animals. Meanwhile, a very young Jonin was passing through the gate, not too long after finishing a mission. He showed the guards his license and let him pass through. It was Itachi who was considered a well-known ninja in Konoha. An. Itachi left the Anbu and changed to be a Jonin and also he doesn't live with his family in this fanfic. As he was walking towards his apartment, he heard yells of happy, bloodthirsty screams coming from an ally. He also heard a small child screaming out for help. He walked over to investigate and he saw Naruto getting beaten and stabbed by the mob and he became angry. So he dove in to rescue the boy. They at first wondered what was going on, but once they noticed who was in front of the boy, they started to become scared. I I Itachi, W what a or why why you dd doing h here? Said a very scared shinobi. Mm maybe h he's here t to h h help us kk kill the demo began a villager but was killed by Itachi with a kunai to the throat and his Sharingan activated spinning violently. They all started screaming and running from the angry Uchiha to avoid getting killed. Itachi started to run towards the hospital to get Naruto help. Don't worry Naruto you'll soon get help, I promise, said a worried Itachi. I I Itachi Kaien ni s san, said Naruto very weakly who then passed out. Itachi then went as fast as his legs could go. He then arrived at the hospital and quickly went in and ran up to the front desk. A nurse looked up and saw Itachi and then saw a very beaten Naruto. I'm sorry, we don't have any available rooms for. Dot him, the nurse said with anger. Itachi then flared his Sharingan at the nurse and said, you will help him or so help me, also flaring his killing intent at her. It was so strong that it was felt by the Hokage who decided to investigate. When he arrived at the hospital via Shushin, he saw Itachi, who was holding a bloody and beaten Naruto, was staring a nurse with his Sharingan activated. Naruto-kun, said a very worried Hokage and ran up to Itachi. Nurse, put Naruto in a room right now, yelled the Hokage. She obeyed him and ran Naruto to a room to begin treatment on him. Itachi and the Hokage were in the room as they were beginning to discuss what had happened to Naruto. What happened? asked the Hokage. Itachi began to explain but was interrupted by one of the doctors. I'm sorry, you two will have to wait outside while we do the procedure, said a doctor. Itachi and the Hokage decided not to in case that they would try and kill Naruto while they weren't in there. Damn it. The doctor mentally cursed. After a while, the doctor said that he would be okay and they left quickly. The Hokage called a few Anbu to protect Naruto and they obeyed. Hokage Tower. Itachi and the Hokage were discussing things about Naruto and Itachi then came up with a solution that could help Naruto. Hokage-sama, I was wondering if I could adopt Naruto and he could live with me in my apartment, said a hopeful Itachi and the Hokage just stared blankly at Itachi and then smiled very happily. Of course you can Itachi, he sees you as a brother figure and I'm sure that he would love to live with you, said an overjoyed Hokage. Thank you Hokage-sama he said as he bowed and left. Thank Kami that Naruto will finally get a better place to live, thought the Hokage. He then pulled out a very familiar orange book and started to giggle perversely as blood dripped from his nose. Hospital, the next day, Itachi and the Hokage were walking into the hospital to see Naruto. 
They walked into Naruto's room and he yelled, Itachi ni san, Oji san. Very happily. Hello Naruto kun, how are you feeling after that experience? The aged Hokage said to the boy. I feel great and thanks Nei san for helping me with that mob, said Naruto. No need to thank me Naruto kun, said Itachi not wanting to be thanked right now. Naruto we have something that we want to ask you as it would be your choice to do it, said the Hokage. What is it Oji san, is it something good, said Naruto. Well Itachi and I were talking and Itachi asked me if he could adopt you and let you live with him, said a hopeful Hokage. Live, with, Itachi, of course I would love to live with you Itachi ni san. Yelled an overjoyed Naruto. Good then, now we will go to the orphanage and get the paperwork done, said the Hokage while he was smiling but that changed when Naruto said something. Oji san I no longer live at the orphanage. They kicked me out two years ago on my birthday. They did what to you Naruto kun. I will deal with it soon very, very soon. Thought a very angry Hokage then sat and look crossed his face. How come you never told me Naruto? Well you're always so busy with the village and I didn't want you to be bothered by something I could handle on my own. Naruto you didn't need to do this alone you can always call on me. Okay. Okay. One, more thing Oji-san, why didn't you tell me that the Kyubi was sealed in me? Asked Naruto. Itachi and Hokage stopped right in front of the door and looked at each other with shocked faces and then looked towards Naruto. They then place all kinds of seals to avoid any interruption. Okay now Naruto, tell us how you found out about the Kyubi and him being sealed in you, asked the Hokage. First off, the Kyubi is actually a girl, correcting the Hokage. They just sat there listening to the young boy. Shaking from their shock they then asked, tell us everything that happened. Flashback Mindscape Little Naruto was walking through a place that looked like a sewer and he was ankle deep in water. He then came up to a room with a large cage door and a seal in the middle of the cage. Naruto then walked closer to the cage and stopped when he heard a large booming voice coming from inside the cage. So my jailer finally comes to see me. What do you want Kit? Who are you and where am I? Asked Naruto not worried about who it was. Oh come on you never seen the Kyubi before. Aren't you supposed to have been killed by the Yondami five years ago? Said Naruto still not scared about it. And what about my second question? First of all, you can't kill me, I would just be reborn in hell and just come back over time. And to answer that second question, you are in your mindscape, said the Kyubi. Then how did you end up inside me? I was sealed by your Yondami five years ago and into this cage, the Kyubi replied. Okay then so why am I here now, did you want to tell me something, asked Naruto. Yes, I did want to tell you something. Several things in fact, said the Kyubi. Like what? Well first of all, I'm really a female and this is just my fox form, I actually have a human form, would you like to see it? He nodded and then she started to shrink down to a human-like shape and he walked closer to see. What he saw was a very beautiful woman with a heart-shaped face and blood-red hair, red silted eyes but she was and he noticed that she had very large s at least large c cups to mid d's so naruto turned away blushing with some blood coming out of his nose while stuttering cc can why you pee please put s some cc clothing oh oh on he 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 sorry is this better naruto turned around and saw that she had a beautiful crimson komodo on it had blue trim to it that hugged her curves yes thanks Second thing that I want to tell you is that I didn't attack the Konoha on purpose. I was forced out of my previous Jinchuriki, Kashina Uzumaki, who I think is your mother, by a man wearing a strange mask and forced me to attack the village. You knew my mother what was she like and do you know who my father was as well? Those questions would probably have to be answered by your Hokage. Oh okay, you can continue now. The final things that I wanted to ask you is do you want me to unlock your dojutsu? What is that? It's a special type of Aijutsu. The one I want to unlock for you is what Itachi's family has it's called the Sharingan. What can it do? That Dojutsu can give you the ability to copy and see through any Ninjutsu, Genjutsu, or Taijutsu. Then yes please give me eyes like Nisan has. Red energy flowed out of the Kyubi into Naruto. It crept up his smell body and into his eyes. Pain flooded his body forcing him to scram out. After a few painful moments, 
Can I use it now so I can see what it looks like? Asked a very happy and tired Naruto. Sure, all you need to do is put a little chakra into your eyes and then look into this mirror to see it. He did what she said and it looked amazing. Blood red eyes stared back a single black comma-like shape slowly circled around his pupil. Thanks Q chan it looks amazing. Also, there is something that you gain through having me, and that is the ability to use all five main elements including the ability to combine them into sub-elements with hard training, she said. That's so cool, so, how do I get out of this place anyway? Just wake up and I think someone is coming so hurry up, she said quickly. Naruto then woke up just in time to see Itachi and the Hokage come in. Flashback end. What happened on the outside were different things. When the human form of the Kyubi was described, the Hokage and Itachi were blown back by major nosebleeds. The part about being forced to attack Konoha, the two felt sorry for accusing her. Finally the part about his new dojutsu and how he can learn every element made them nearly faint. It looks like Naruto-kun will become one of the world's strongest people if he trains long enough. Hey maybe you Itachi could help train Naruto-kun. I'll even put him in the academy in two or three years to be with many of the next clan heirs, offered the Hokage. Naruto looked like he was about to explode with joy as he smiled happily. Yeah I'm going to be a ninja, shouted Naruto. He then remembered what he wanted to ask Oji-san. Oji-san who was my father? I already know that my mother is Kashina Uzumaki. So who was he? Naruto questioned and the Hokage started sweating bullets. Okay then your father was. Minato Namikaze the, dot the, dot the Yondami, fourth Hokage, said the old man as Naruto and Itachi just fainted at the answer. Looks like they took it too fast hehehehehe. <laughs> Laughed the Hokage then pulled out a little orange book to read while waiting for them to wake up. Itachi and Naruto woke up to the Hokage reading an orange book while making perverted giggles. Hokage-sama, Oji-san. They both said at the same time scaring the Hokage half to death. He he sorry, so anyway Naruto-kun could we see those new eyes of yours? Asked the Hokage. Naruto then closed his eyes and put chakra into his eyes activating it. When he opened them they saw Naruto's new Sharingan looking at them. Itachi smiled at how the Sharingan ever present in its glory. Naruto then took chakra away from his eyes turning them back to normal. So what was that about adopting Mine-san? He asked. Itachi then snapped back to reality and answered him. Huh. Oh, as I said I was wondering if you would like to come live with me in my apartment. Sure I would love to, would you also train me? He asked. Sure, why not? That afternoon, Itachi's apartment. Here we are, your room is down the hall on the left. Itachi said. Okay Nisan thanks. Naruto replied. I'll make dinner soon so make yourself at home. As Naruto walked around his apartment it was fairly normal. Had a one kitchen. One bathroom, a small living room, but it did have two bedrooms. The walls were painted a light blue, with some pictures of Itachi's family mostly of his mother and brother Sasuke who he has seen around the village. Some pictures of friends or of cousins. But he couldn't find much with his father and he never looked happy. Not knowing how families worked he didn't think much of it. Soon he came to his room and the first thing he noticed was the bed. Mostly due to the fact it was the only thing in the whole room. But he didn't care because up to now he always slept outside even at the place where all the other kids were and people brought them home to become their son or daughter. He didn't like it there the people in charger would often beat him and not feed him most of the time for days on end. Hell they made him sleep outside after a beating on the coldest day of winter. Assholes. He thought out loud with a small amount of anger. I'm sorry if the room is not to your liking I didn't have time to shop yet. Itachi said with amusement in his voice as he cleaned his hands off on a towel knowing ever while Naruto wasn't talking about his room. Naruto now embarrassed couldn't hide his red face. No, I mean it's nothing about the room I love it. This is the first bed I will ever sleep in. It's just, you know never mind it doesn't matter now. I live with my niece San now that's all that matters. He said with smile on the last part. Smiles cross on his lips. Good you feel that way because you're stuck with me for now. Go on dinner is waiting, I'll be out in a minute. Naruto quickly left to the table in the kitchen leaving a dust trail behind him. Itachi's smile slowly turns to a frown. 
his first bed, were we at war and I didn't notice. He soon left the room to join Naruto and what Sao made him smile. Sitting at the table was Naruto his food untouched, obviously waiting for him and openly showing how impatient he was getting if his grumbling was any indicating. Why did you wait so long to eat Naruto I thought you would have eaten both our plates by now. Hey I'm not that bad, okay so maybe I'm that bad but, I wanted our first dinner as a family to be eaten together. He said looking at the ground, he closed his eyes ready to cry thinking he did something wrong and was scared that his Nissan wouldn't want him around now. Itachi smiled, touched that Naruto would do something so out of character. Reaching over he placed his hand on his spiky blonde hair and rubbed gently. Naruto was shocked at the feeling and opened his eyes to see Itachi smiling brightly at him. As brightly as one gets with him anyways. Naruto was used to having someone put hands on him but it was to cause him bodily harm. Seeing this caring act made him cry and feel safe. Truly safe like nothing could ever hurt him. They soon eat their food in pace and made small talk. As they enjoyed their night their laughter filled the air of the apartment. The night ended with a movie Itachi had bought that morning a princess gale that just came out. Naruto was entranced by the movie and Itachi couldn't help but smile at Naruto's antics. After the movie Itachi put Naruto to bed. Good night Naruto-kun sweet dreams. Good night Itachi Nisan. Thanks, today was the best day of my life. Said Naruto with a true smile the one he didn't put up in front of people. But the smile of a little boy just as it should be. Itachi decided in that moment to protect him in any way he could, to have him truly smile for as long and as often as possible. Right after Naruto was out like a light within two seconds, Itachi had to stifle a laugh for just how quickly Naruto would be full of energy one second then out the next. That night Naruto was for the first time in his small life was able to sleep peacefully with no worries. The next day, after getting up and taking a shower Itachi has to get Naruto up to start the day. Naruto-kun time to get up. No response. He puts his hand on Naruto's shoulder and lightly shacks him. Come on Naruto-kun we have a full day planned. Still no response from the blonde boy. Itachi was known as a fairly even-tempered man but even he had limits this early. Naruto-kun get up now. Ah, screams Naruto as he falls from his bed his blanket wrapped around him. Oh good morning Nisan, Naruto said tiredly. Recomposing himself Itachi watched as Naruto untangled himself from the blanket. Naruto after we are done eating and you take a shower we're going shopping to get you something new to wear. Can you teach how to do some ninja stuff? Hum, sure I think a good to start would how to unlock all of your charka. Nisan can't I do that, I can already use the Sharingan after all. No, you're only using a small prochain of your overall charka, just as much as it takes to use it. The rest is still locked inside of you. Naruto closed his eye in thought and tilted his hand to the side much as a fox would. Okay so if I can unlock the rest I can learn really cool jutsu. Itachi simply nodded his head. Sweet, I'm gonna learn how to do cool jutsu just like Nisan. Itachi smiled and laughed at the young boy's enthusiasm. Well if you wish to learn we better eat and get going then. At a clothing shop in the Uchiha district. And that they did. 30 minutes later they were out the door and on their way to a clothing store. When the shopkeeper glared at Naruto Itachi shot him one back daring him to try something. The killer intent liking from Itachi made the man back off faster than you could blink. An hour later of shopping Naruto walked out of the dressing room in some new clothing. Naruto was wearing a black t-shirt with an orange spiral on the back, black anbu pants, and black fingerless gloves with metal studs where his knuckles would be and to finish as the emo look Itachi was throwing at him black shinobi sandals were on his feet. You look good Naruto-kun. Thanks Nisan but it's like it's missing something. I think you're right, hold on I'll be right back. With that Itachi took off for two or three minutes. He returns with something held under his arm. Here try this on I think it well look good on you. Naruto unfolded it to find it was a very dark blue jacket that went down to his ankles. Black leather straps hung off the front, made to quickly do or undo them. On the inside were pockets for scrolls or offhand stuff lined with steel mash to protect the wearer. On the life shoulder was metal plate and the right side, the size of Naruto's hand, was imprinted proudly the Uchiha crest. Without a second thought he put on the jacket his Nissan give him. 
This is so cool. I look like a badass. Naruto proudly yelled. You won't sound the part if you keep yelling like that though. Itachi chuckled when Naruto began to pout. That also doesn't help your case any. He mused at the youth. Hey ni san what's the thing on that back it looks like a holder? Asked Naruto with a confused look. Oh you'll see Naruto. At the flying dragon weapon shop. Next they headed off a weapon story and a basic seat of kanai and shuriken which was 40 of each. Mash armor of different sizes with steel arm and leg guards. When Naruto wasn't looking Itachi also paid for a seat of special wrapping of legs and arms. Naruto walked around the store, eyeing the many and varying items. They had every weapon a person could ask for. Looking over every weapon they had Naruto felt he was in a candy story. That one has taken a liking to my shop it seems, said the gruff looking shop owner said to Itachi as Naruto had stars in his eyes. He was as tall as Itachi with many scars on his face and arms. A strong looking body honed from years of black smithing. Neat tucked brown hair tied in a ponytail with a goatee complete with deep brown eyes. Indeed, it seems he has. He's the boy it's he. Itachi nodded. Well his welcome's here any time, the pig headed people. You better be good to him Itachi has had a hard life. He needs you, someone to look after him and care for him. Yes he does, and I'll be there for him don't make the mistake thinking I won't. Said Naruto adoptive brother in a hard voice. I just wouldn't want my daughter to have to live the life he had to live that all. Speaking of your daughter how is 1010 doing Miyosha? Itachi asked. She is doing very well in the academy. Perfect aim never misses once said the proud father. Hey ni san look at what I found. Naruto said as he ran up to them with a sword in its sheath wrapped in a cloth. Let's see it Naruto-kun. After grabbing sword and unwrapping it, the sheath and handle were rectangular in shape and midnight black in color. The handle itself had a small indent where a deep red like blood color metal was placed. Pulling it out slowly it gave of a beautiful ringing noise, the blade was silver with a reddish blade edge and looked deadly. Think Sasuke's sword from Shippuden but with the colors. This is a beautiful sword Naruto how did you find this? Itachi asked as he sheathed it. I don't really don't know. I guess something just called out to me. It's really weird to explain. I see well in that case their only thing to do. Itachi smiled at Naruto then handed the sword to the man. As of today Naruto the sword is yours take good care of it. W what are you serious Nisan? After a nod Naruto keeping looking like he couldn't believe what just happened. Are you going to teach me how to use it? I will teach what I can. Come on now let's go unlock the rest of your chakra now Naruto. Okay. At the academy training grounds. They soon found themselves at the academy's training ground. Naruto had taken off his jacket and had Itachi to hold on to. After explaining the basics of Charka to Naruto we find our blonde hero setting on a seal array trying to unlock his Charka, but so far to no luck. Nisan what those chakras feel like? Hum, I guess the best way to say it is it's a warm feeling. When you feel Naruto-kun you grab it and pull it, pull as much as you can. Keep pulling it to the point won't budge anymore. With a nod Naruto closes his eyes to fell his chakra. Soon a sensation Itachi described could be felt. Naruto did what he was told and pulled it. But no matter how much he pulled it keep coming so he kept going. There's so much it doesn't seem to end. But Nisan said I shouldn't stop so I won't, I won't stop Nisan. When Naruto starting pulling on his charka. On the outside Naruto looked clam almost statue-like. Itachi was trying to sense chakra from Naruto. Then a small fair began showing itself as the grass around the child started to be pushed outward. That's it Naruto you can do it. Then a large burst of chakra started pouring out of Naruto's small frame, the level just kept climbing up higher and higher. Damn what the hell, how can he have so much already? The chakra got so high it became visible looking as if Naruto was on fire with blue flames that kept getting lager. It was at this point that Itachi started to break out in a cooled sweat. H how much more can he pull out? He said out loud. What Itachi saw next amassed him the chakra itself started to twist inward to Naruto's body look like a whirlpool. Then in a split second all of it was pulled into the blonde hero's body like it was never there. Naruto opened his eyes looking tired. A smile spared across his face, how did I do Nisan? 
You did amassing Naruto. I'm so proud to be your father. Itachi said without thinking with a smile and eyes closed missing the fox-like smile on Naruto face. Good night, dad. And with that Naruto drifted to sleep. Itachi picked Naruto up after gathering their things. He headed home and put Naruto in his bed and packed things into trailing packs for what he had planned in the near future. As Itachi sat down as there was a knock at the door. Now who could that be? Itachi said to himself as he opened the door. To his shock it was he mother who he had not seen since he moved out because his father would not allow it. Mother, I'm so happy to see you but why are you here I though father wouldn't let anybody in the clan see me as clan head. Makoto was a beautiful woman with long black hair like most Uchiha, don't forget about Naruto's blonde hair, with onyx color eyes. She was wearing a blue mid-thigh skirt and a red tank top with a darker blue jacket that stopped just below her chest. Itachi your asshole of a father cheated on me. I'm leveling his ass and taking Sasuke with me. She said with a raising voice. Okay but you need to keep it down mother my son is trying to sleep. Itachi said with his monotone way of speaking. At first she simply compiled not thinking much of it but soon what was said CED in her mind. Son. What do you mean son Itachi? She spouted in a semi-quiet voice. After taking a seat on the couch Itachi began to tell what happened in the last two days. They keep talking for an hour going over almost everything. Who would have thought he would have the Sharingan and at such a young age? So what are you going to do now Itachi? I'm leaving to train Naruto tomorrow for two or three years. Until then feel free to live here. I'm taking Naruto to train him for two or three years. Until then feel free live here. Makoto just sat there doing her best impression of a fish. Are you sure you want this? Itachi nodded. Okay I love you Itachi take care of yourself and Naruto. She lovingly hugged her son, and then punched him hard in the head sending him to the floor. What was that for? Itachi whined as he rubbed his head. That's for making me a grandmother already. Now I feel old. She dropped her head in depression. Well you sure as hell don't look like it mother. I'm going to bed I need to get up early, you can have my room. Thanks son I love you. Do you know any places I could rent out? Yes I'll make a list before I leave to talk to Hokage Sama tomorrow. Could you watch Naruto when I'm gone? No problem what kind of grandmother would I be if I couldn't do that? She said smiling. After Itachi went to bed Makoto looked around the apartment and soon came across a sleeping Naruto covered in a blue confider. She smiled at seeing the small boy and slowly went over to him setting next to him she covered the new Uchiha a little more. So you're my grandson ah? Uh? Well welcome to the family Naruto Uzumaki Uchiha. Then she closed her eyes and took a deep calming breath. Take care one young on path, may you grow strong in both body and spirit. Grow strong for you are Uchiha, the family of fire and strength. She opened her eyes and looked at Naruto. That's the prey of our family Naruto. May you grow strong under Itachi's training. I fear that in the coming days that you won't have a choice but to be strong, for yourself and this family. The next day with Itachi. Itachi woke bright and early for his talk with the third Hokage. Itachi had been thinking of the training Naruto would need. As he neared the Hokage tower he noticed some Anbu watching him more than normal for someone going to tower. After entering the tower he went straight to the Hokage's office and knocked on the closed red door. Come in, said in voice of the Hokage in a leader-like fashion. Hokage-sama I need to talk to you, Itachi said as he entered. Looking up from his desk Sarutobi he saw Itachi coming in. This brought a smile to the Hokage's face. The old Hokage of 55 years of age sat at his desk. His lightly tanned skin did not hide the aging lines on his face. His white spiky fading hairline showed. His brown eyes showed compassion and love for his village and his people. Yes Itachi what can I do for you? How is Naruto-kun? Said the aged Hokage radiating grandfatherly love when speaking of Naruto. Well I came to speak to you about Naruto and his very happy and doing well. With a simple nod from the Hokage Itachi continued on. Well I'm going to take Naruto outside of the village for training tonight and would like your help on some things. Of course Itachi what do you need? I need permission to train Naruto out of the country, a list of possible training grounds. Uh, I will give you give the list you asked for but I want mouthy reports on him. I will also give him some of my personal jutsu to learn. 
Is that acceptable Itachi? Of course Hokage-sama and I thank you for your help on this matter. Now Itachi I need to talk to you about something of the utmost importance. Itachi face got hard at full tension. It has come to the worst possible conclusion Itachi they are going to rebel. They will try to attack soon and kill everyone in their quest to power. And we both know who's behind that one. So father will lead them to war against the village after all. Itachi balled his fist until his knuckle turned white. Those power-hungry morons, what the hell are they thinking? Itachi said as he started to cry. That means that it's my family or the whole village. God damn it. He started to cry harder he knew his family was going to be killed off on the Hokage's order. But he knew if he was in charge he would order it as well. I'm so sorry Itachi I tried to stop this but your father wouldn't hear of it. The order was already given. Stopping himself from crying and drying his tears looked at his Hokage. Who's going to do it? Your old friend Shinjo Uchiha will be the one to do it. But there is good news Itachi. Those made Itachi look at the old cage. He is to only kill the ones involved with the rebellion. That's good, said a relive Itachi. It's still over 70% of the clan but at least some will live. Is mother and my brother on that list as while? Yes but neither will be able to take the position of clan head. Then who will lead the clan Hokage-sama? When you return to the village you will be clan head Itachi then Naruto after you. That had been the biggest shock Itachi had that day. But why me? Hokage-sama there has to be someone other than me. You are the only choice because it's well known to those in power that you and your father would often fight over the rebellion as well the whole village. That makes you ideal to rebuild face with the villagers after this. You are also known to be the most powerful Sharingan user that will make those of the Uchiha clan unite under you. Also you will change the teaching of your clan as you see fit and teach them the right way. Itachi lowered his head to think it over. Looking every possible detail over he knew the leader of his home was right. He was the best and only chose on the matter. So he just nodded his head in understanding to the Hokage. Come Itachi we need to get your things together for your and Naruto's training trip. Meanwhile, after Naruto got up he found Makoto cooking breakfast in the kitchen and freaked out. Soon Makoto calmed him down and told him that she was his grandmother. Then they talked about the Uchiha clan and being a ninja, and her personal. Soon they went to park to play for two hours of fun-filled laughter. Now they're eating ice cream enjoying the afternoon of fun and laughter. Thank you for such a great day I had so much fun. Said the young blonde Uchiha. You're very welcome Naruto I had fun. Said Makoto with a small smile. I can't wait to learn how to be a ninja from dad I'm going to be super strong and smart. Naruto said with a big grin over his face. Makoto laughed at his energy and couldn't help but feel happy. I'm sure you well Naruto but don't ever lose who you are. I won't because now I don't have to hide myself. I have a family that loves me and I'll protect them with my own two hands. A proud smile formed on her face. Keep that to heart and there's no limit to what you can do Naruto. You're going to change the clan for the better if you keep that up Naruto I just know it. Naruto did you have fun today, said a monotone voice from behind Naruto and Makoto. As they turn they see Itachi standing there with a smile on his face. In a split second Naruto tackled him to the ground hugging him. Dad I had so much fun today. We went to the park and had ice cream and talked it was great. I'm glad to hear that. Naruto we're going go on the training trip in a few minutes so go get ready. After a few minutes they got their stuff to gather and headed to the village gate. They both looked back at their home for a few seconds. Both making silent vows to come back stronger, then they headed out to find the first of the training grounds. Later that night scrams were heard from the Uchiha clan compound. A few days later at the first training ground, Naruto sat in an opened grass field in his boxers. Itachi was giving Naruto the basic rundown of how to use charka and jutsu. They were somewhere in fire country, their camp sat up as a basic two tents a pit for a fire and all the things they would need. Okay Naruto I need you to stand up now, said Itachi from a standing position as he looked at Naruto. Naruto didn't hesitate standing up as he did Itachi quickly throw five unraveling wraps into the air. His hands moved faster than Naruto's eyes could follow. When his finished the wrapping stopped mid-fall and quickly went to Naruto wrapping around his arms, legs, and chest. 
After they stopped strange symbols appeared all over the wrappings and in the middle of hands and feet showed the word gravity. As soon as that was finished a crushing weight come all over young Naruto's body making him fall onto the ground. Tun San why am I so heavy now? I feel like I'm being pulled down to the ground. That because I put a gravity seals on you for training. This is the first stage, that's double normal gravity. Naruto looked at him with bugged eyes, as he was about to say something about it Itachi interrupted him. Naruto if you can do this in training then you will become very strong. A gentle look came over Naruto's face then became one of determination. If it will make me strong then I'll do it and master my training. I'll become the strongest ninja in the world. He started to try to get up but was having a hard time. I won't let this stop me I will become strong. He got a foot under him. Starting pushing up he put all his strength into keep up soon standing there in front of his father Itachi. Well said Naruto now we well are going on a 14 mile jog then you well do 200 push ups and set ups. And then move on to chakra control and taijutsu. Naruto then face planted on the ground. Are you okay Naruto kun? Fine, I'm fine, he said as got off the ground a lot easier this going unnoticed to him but not Itachi. He is already getting used to it. It must be the Kyubi healing his muscle making them stronger in the presses. If this keeps put I can increase his training tenfold. Okay father let's go I'm ready. After that Itachi jogged off on an easy pace but Naruto had to try a lot harder to keep up. This is going to be a long three years, but I'll come back stronger thanks to father's training. Naruto you're falling behind move it or I'll have you do 100 extra push ups and set ups. Then again it could kill me too. Naruto thought as he spade up. After 14 painful miles Naruto wasted no time and got straight to push-ups and set-ups. When he finished his whole body throbbed in pain, fire filled his veins and his breaths were labored. After a short break it was on to chakra control. Soon Naruto found himself surrounded by trees. Itachi reached up to a low branch and picked off a leaf from the tree. Okay Naruto this is the first step to gaining control over your huge amount of chakra you have is keep this leaf to stick to your forehead using nothing but your chakra. Father how does keeping a leaf on my forehead help me become a ninja, well it allow me to keep a sword to my head. Naruto asked as he imaged himself armed to the teeth and a short sword sticking to his head fighting a horde of enemies ninja. Well I suppose one could do that. Itachi's sweat dropped. But the point is to help you learn to control your chakra so you don't waste it trying to use jutsu. For you personally it will be the hardest thing you learn how to do. Nodding his head in understanding Naruto takes the leaf and puts it to his head and sticks for a second before it shots off like a bullet. Time and time again it kept happening just a second longer with every untempt he does. After half hour Naruto loses his temper feeling as his going nowhere and cusses like no tomorrow. Why can't I do this? Didn't I say it was going to be hard for you Naruto? Yes I don't get why it's so hard to do this. It's because you have so much chakra and zero experience using it correctly. Those two things together are what make your control so bad. The adoptive father said in full lecture mode then small gentle smile aperies on his face. Believe it or not Naruto you are getting this very quickly. I know you're young yet so you have a long way to go but you'll get strong Naruto. And the first step is getting this down I believe in you. The look of shock covered Naruto's face then a confident took over with a steeled gaze. Getting back into the grinder Naruto put the leaf to his forehead, Itachi took this moment to leave to go catch lunch. After an hour getting a few fish to cook Itachi returns to something he didn't think he would see. Setting still Naruto sat with a leaf in the middle of his head and one per temple. Staying in one place he watched Naruto continue for 20 minutes before Naruto opened his eyes with a yawn but the leaf stayed in place. To be able to get this far in so short of time is far above what I expected at his age. Itachi thought, come on Naruto it's time to eat. A short while later Naruto was eating more than his fair share of the fish. Meaning eating like he hasn't eaten in weeks. After inhale. I mean eating lunch they got into Naruto's studies teaching everything he would need to know was the goal. This went on for several hours showing this was not his strong point, and to end the day jumping into taijutsu. Their taijutsu practices consented of the very bisect of the, interceptor fist, stale taijutsu going over it until it was perfect and then some more to lock it into place. I'm so sore, Naruto said as they walked back to camp. 
The pain I feel has pain. Naruto faked cried. If you feel that way, then get over it. Itachi smiled playing along with Naruto's antics. Pretending to be upset Naruto says. Fine be that way, one day I'll get strong enough to beat you in a fight father. The last part he said completely serious and full with confidence. Itachi is filled with pride in his adoptive son and smiles as Naruto father. I hope you do one day Naruto. Keep training like we have been and you well. I'll keep training until I drop. Good now then tomorrow I well push your taijutsu farther with 2000 punches and kicks per hand and leg. Naruto stops with the look of complete horror on his face. He knows his father was completely serious and slowly a smile forms on Naruto's face. Fine I will do this insane training and push further. I will become stronger, stronger than father. For the next two months Naruto trained in this fashion pushing him farther and farther. Sweat, blood and tears were shed every day. Naruto wouldn't have much of arms or legs if he didn't heal by the next morning. At the end of the week Itachi would go over what Naruto learned. Then it was time to move on and out of Fire County. During his time there Naruto got every good at controlling his charka. Itachi was impressed so he taught Naruto shadow clone jutsu, confident that with Naruto's revisors he could handle it. Itachi was surprised when Naruto performed the jutsu thinking one or two at the max, when Naruto made fifty before becoming too exhausted. Itachi taught Naruto the secret of the shadow clone and allowed Naruto to increase his studies. Father, where are we going now? Naruto asked, we're going to the mist village first so you can water walking and water jutsu. Then the village hiding in the clouds for lighting, sand for wind, and lastly village hidden in the stone is our last stop for earth jutsu, and if you think this is some kind of vacation then you're mistaking. Boot we could have some fun if you train hard. Quote. It was going to be a long and painful three years for our blonde hero. It was early morning the sun has not even started to show and a thick fog hung in the air. Three figures walked towards the village hidden in the leaves. All of them were dressed in dark blue rain cloaks with hoods covering their faces. Two of them stood less than six feet in height the other was just over five feet. They were stopped at the gate by two Chunin guards. Halt, why are you here? said the Chunin trying and falling at intimidating the traversers. We are returning home from a training trip, said a man that then took off his hood. As it fall it showed his black hair and onyx eyes. Itachi-sama I'm so glad you have returned said an Uchiha guard walking up to them. I have heard what happened. How is everyone? They are well. Your mother has been acting as clan head until your return and has done a fine job doing so. Said the Uchiha as he bowed to his clan head and stood back up. Well you and the young hare be returning to the compound after you see the Hokage. Yes, but it will be some time before we come back, we have a lot to talk about with Hokage-sama. Very well I well inform the clan as my shift is ending. With a quick nod they entered the village. As they walked to the tower Itachi took off his cloak opening a scroll and sealing it away. He now wears a black long sleeve shirt, anbu pants, and anbu shoes. His fishnet shirt was easy to see under his black one. They didn't stop as they just walked right into the Hokage office with a clam air around them. Hello Hokage-sama we have returned. As you know Naruto's training went far farther than we originally thought. Said Itachi in his business-like, monotone voice. A smile appeared on the third's face. So I heard but I would like to see him for myself. So Naruto why don't you come over and let me see you? The shortest one came over to the Hokage and took off the cloak to see a more mature face with three whiskers birth makers. His clothing had not changed much from three years ago but his dark blue jacket was now black with blue flames with red tips at the bottom's trim. Note he has his sword sealed away. His blonde hair was a little longer but had not changed. The air around Naruto seemed calmer then before but has a warmer feel to it. Hi Oji-san I missed you. I see you took care of the village. So when can I become an official ninja? The old cage couldn't help but laugh at his energy. Even with him being calmer he was still full of energy. After two years in the academy I'm afraid. But it gives you a chance to make so friends in your age group. Now Naruto why don't you go have a day off and have fun, we don't need you here for the boring stuff. Okay see you later Oji-san. Bye dad I'm go train for a little while and then get some ramen. Okay but don't pig out or I'll have to work it off of you. 
Itachi said with a smile that made Naruto as pale as a ghost, and Naruto quickly left out the nearest window. Well did you finish that little deal till we talk about Sarutobi? Said a gruff voice of the stranger still wearing his rain cloak. Yes I did. The Hokage handed the stranger some papers and a head bended. You Kisame Hoshigaki are now a Jonin ninja of Kanahagakur. As the Hokage said that the man took off his hood reviling a blue-skinned man with the appearance of a shark. With sharp pointed teeth and gill-like marks on his cheek it's hard not to think that. Thanks Suru a Hokage-sama, said the grinning shark man. And thank you for helping Naruto with his training. The smiling cage said with joy. Please that little kid was fun as hell to train. He can take a beating and get back up like nothing. As he said that he took out a scroll and unsealed a large sword in wrapping that was as long as he was tall. At this point Itachi jumped in. So Sarutobi-sama have you giving any thought of what you are going to with Naruto do when he leaves the academy? Yes I have when Naruto leave and reaches the age of 15 teen he will be put under the CRA. That got the other two to look right at him like he grew a second head. Why would he be put under that Hokage-sama? Because Itachi there's now only six Uchiha in the whole world now, you, Naruto, Sasuke your brother, Makoto your mother, the Chunin you saw, and Shinjo who became a missing ninja. You are going to be put under this but you're going to clan head and is already your right to enact this as your right at this time so it's a mood point. The old cage take out his tobacco pipe and starts smoking. After taking a few moments he started talking again. Your mother is becoming too old, and I wouldn't put a woman under that anyway. Sasuke is your brother but is feared that your father has had too much influence on him. So Naruto is the only chose now and in truth the only one to begin with as he was only adopted just before the relabeling ended and has the Sharingan. I see but please don't force anyone onto him. Asked the clan head. I won't have to until his 18th birthday. Now tell me everything that has happened in the last the years. With Naruto. Naruto was on the other side of the village enjoying his day. Outside of some new stores and restraints the village had not changed from three years ago. He so found himself in restraint part of the village as they were just starting their day. As his stomach started growling at him he decided it was too early for ramen so he went to the closest place to him which was a barbecue place. As he interned it looked fairly normal hard wood floors and places to set down conformably. What was cool about the place is that in the mid of the tables were grills to cook the food how you like. After eating Naruto walked around so more and soon came across a small group of men six in all that are little older than him surrounding a blonde girl his age in an alleyway with b-cup bust, her hair up in a bun and a thick strand covering one side of her face, and baby blue eyes, in a purple top that shows her mid-sanction and shorts that complemented her bottle butt, wrapping round her thighs and under her top most likely hiding her true size. Come on babe join us for some fun you'll like it, the leader of the men said. There no reason to make it hard on yourself. Go yourself. I wouldn't touch you with a ten-foot pole. The blonde girl said angrily at the men surrounding her. Well you had your chance now we do it the hard way, and to think I would have been so much gentler to you if you had just came like a good whore. As the group jumped to grab her, a black and yellow blur appeared kicked them all upside of their heads in a spin kick. What the hell was that? The leader said as he held his head in pain as did the other men there. Standing there in the circle of people was a kid no older than eleven with his arms at his side and an icy stare that looked though them like if the death himself was looking at them. The look in his eyes made them pause for a second before they became enraged. What the, how did he do that I couldn't even see him move? The girl thought. The leader of group quickly got a Y grin on his face as he saw it was just a kid and thought he simply got the drop on them. Okay kid if you get out of here now you won't get hurt. We just want the little blonde behind you. Naruto narrowed his eyes and get into a loose stance. Fine, get him boys. As soon as he gives the order they charge to get the blonde boy only they couldn't lay a hand on him. He moved to fast and blocked everything they sent his way and worse he never moved from where he was. Soon with quick hard punches disabled four of the five men attacking him. Naruto grabbed the last punch and pulled bringing him closer for Naruto to uppercut him in his jaw with a sickening crack as his jaw shuddered apart. As the man fell unconscious Naruto started walking forward to the leader who was on the ground on his ass shaking in fear at the boy who just took out his men without them touching him once. 
You want her for yourself you can have her, just leave me alone. He still kept coming at the rapist. You well pay for what you tried to do here today you scum. Naruto said in a dark voice as the air around him seemed to become colder. The man tried to get up to run away only Naruto to kick him in his side forcing him to the ground. Then he grabbed him by his neck holding him in the air then slamming him into the wall of the alleyway. The look in this boy's blue eye made him tear up in fear. Naruto then dropped the man for him to get a knee shoved into his stomach. The man started to dry hive to be kicked in the face. The man was on the ground holding his face in pain of having his nose being broken. Then feel the back of his head being grabbed and shoved down into the pavement below bring sweet unconscious. The girl was wide eye at the boy who had saved her as he was tying up the group of rapists. Who is this guy he beat them all without breaking a sweat? She was sniped out of her thinking when she heard a voice. I'm s sorry what did you say? In a caring voice with the softest eye that made her melt he said. Are you okay miss? Why yes t thank you for your help. She said as a full body blush took over. She found him to be really cute with the whiskers marks. You're welcome I'm just glad you're okay. I called for police to pick them up. He said with a bright fox like smile. That smile made her body heat up. T that g good w what's your n name if I am may ask. My name is Naruto. What's yours beautiful? She felt her heart skip a beat. Eno my name is Eno Naruto. How about I walk you home Eno? His soft blue eyes made it impossible for her to say no. But why would she say no in the first place? That sounds nice. A cute smile came to her face that made Naruto blush. Okay let's go then. Eno grappled his arm as they walked and hugged it close to her. The walk was nice but it was to quit for Eno. So were you from Naruto I don't think I have seen you around before. I was on a training trip for three years with my father, we just got back today. Naruto said looking her straight in her eyes. Wow that's so cool I have to bug my dad in order get any training. So does that mean you're going to be a ninja? She said with a smile. Eno welcome home sweetie who's your friend? Said a much older woman who appeared to be 30 or so waving at them from a flower store window. Is this where you live Eno? Asked Naruto. Yes I do. Thank you for walking me home Naruto. It was my honor to walk you home Eno. I'll see you another day. With that he left leaving Eno standing there dreamily until something hit her. Dame it he never answered my question about him being a ninja. Eno screamed at the top of her lungs. Eno come in already. I'm coming mom. Said a defeated blonde female ninja. A woman with soft, short, pale blonde hair looking like an older Eno huff blowing some strand hair out of her face. What was keeping you so long dear? She said as she went back to cooking lunch. I was talking to a boy who saved me from being the entertainment of six assholes. Oh my dear god Eno are you okay, did they thouch you? I'm fine mom as I said this boy came out of nowhere and saved me. Over the course of several minutes Eno explained what had happened. Oh well maybe you should invite him over so we can give him a proper thank you. Said the blonde mother. With Naruto. Naruto walked until he got to the Hokage Tower to meet up with Itachi as he came out of said tower. Without saying anything Naruto blended in with Itachi and Kisame. How was your day Naruto do anything interesting? Itachi asked. Not really. At some food, saved a blonde girl from some rapists. Naruto said in a nonchalant meaner. Would have been easier if I was used to the new gravity seals you put on me. What are you at now anyway? Asked the shark like man. Eleven times normal gravity now. Dame kid you don't take anything at a slow pace do you? Kisame grow a shark like grin. Did you co-op a feel on her player? In an instant Naruto was sporting a full body blush. W what or why you saying you perverted fish? Itachi and Kisame laughed at poor Naruto. Shut up. It's not funny. Naruto pleaded not it only increased their laughter. Father may I make a request of you? He said without a hint of humor. What is it Naruto? Itachi said with a raised eyebrow. I wish to live outside of the compound for as long as I'm in the academy, and for you to not tell anyone who doesn't know that I'm your son. Itachi's eyes widened from shock for a moment. His eyes softened as he looked at his son's face. I will allow you to do this but I must ask why do you want this? I must gain the people's respect before I become clan head. A look of confidence made it seem that nothing could stop him. 
I well make people see me for who I am. I am Naruto Uzumaki Uchiha. Naruto said in his fox-like grin shone in full blast. Kisami's and Itachi's eyes widen as the wind blows shifting Naruto golden hair, and his coat flapped around his body as the sun hit him in a way his body seemed to glow, making him look like a hero from a story. Very well you have school tomorrow don't be late. Itachi threw envelope filled wish cash to Naruto as he started to walk away. Do well and make me proud son. Five hours later, Naruto ended up buying Itachi's old apartment before him and Itachi left to go training. The paint was slightly faded but overall looks the same. The living room had a new black leather couch with a black cafe table with a blue spiral in the middle. Bookshelves covered the walls, history, nonfiction, fiction, mythology, clans of the world, and theory volumes of Nin, Tai, Gen, and Chakra filled the shelves. The kitchen got the top of the line stove, refrigerator, and dishwasher with silver chrome. Black garnet counter polished to a shine. New cooking weir lined the counter from the refrigerator to the stove but in a way it wasn't cluttered and plenty of room to make a meal. Clear red and blue glass dishes filled the cabinets. The refrigerator and pantry were stocked full of foods. Naruto took Itachi's old room, with a queen-size bed, covered in a light red sheets and dark blue conferred, on an oak bed frame and two cherry night stands makes it a nice sleeping area. A dark oak dresser six feet long and three feet tall sat across from the bed with a 32 inches plasma screen TV on top. The last thing Naruto did was turn his old room into a study for ninjutsu, taijutsu, and genjutsu scrolls. The room itself has a security seal on it to prevent anyone but himself from opening the door. An iron oak desk lay against the northern wall and bookshelves filled with scrolls from D to a rank of every element and many non-elements filled the room. Well that's a hard day's work done, Naruto said as he yawned. What time is it? asked the shirtless Naruto. Man it's 11 o'clock already better get to bed. He put his arms over his head and stretched showing his hard abs and pecs but not bulky to get in the way that is only horned over years of training. After a hot shower and brushed teeth he was ready for bed. Getting under his covers Naruto thinks back on all the days he spent to get where he is now. To be this strong and how hard it was to get here, how many bones his broken and tears he shed, and what the future would hold. How would the people of Konoha treat him, would they still see him as a monster? How good were the other kids of his generation? Were any of them going to be a challenge? These were just a few that flew across his mind as he drifted to sleep. He alarm went off strewing blonde hair within the red sheets. Shut up you stupid alarm clock, said a groggy Naruto but it kept beeping. Wham! The clock busted into an unfixable miss on the nightstand and floor. Naruto pulled his fist back to his body. As he was about to fall back to sleep a second muffled alarm started to make a noise. Fine I'm up. Naruto yelled at no one as he swung his legs over the side and opening the nightstand to find the devil's machine going off. I hate your kind so much. Naruto sender at it as he turned it off to replace the one he destroyed. Once the miss was cleaned up and a new back up in the nightstand from the closet. 5.30 uh well school starts at 8 o'clock so I have time for my light training exercises. 200 laps around Konoha 1000 push-ups and set up with a 250 lb boulder on my back. Naruto said with a smile. On the other side of Konoha, might guy felt a chilly go up his spine. Some young ninja is going through the power of youth. To keep up with him, H.E.R. I will do 2000 speed push-ups per arm with a 500 LB boulder. With Naruto, an hour and 30 minutes later Naruto was finished with his exercises and returned home. After a quick shower and breakfast Naruto set out to start his first day of school. Naruto walked through the village with a slow stride as if he owned the place and had nowhere to be. It didn't matter Naruto would still be early. Twenty minutes later Naruto showed at the academy to see a mass of people outside of door that lead into the academe. As Naruto looked around at the young ninja hopefuls he was reminded how he used to dream about becoming a powerful ninja, and having his name go down in history without knowing what it was like to fight, just to survive and to protect. Flashback no jutsu, Naruto nine years old now was jumping from branch to tree branch as he and his father moved through the thick swamp lands of water country home of the mist village far away from the war going on in the mist village. Today was a big day for Naruto he would finally get to go on a mission with his father. They weren't really mission more like bounty hunting. 
Itachi would come across a village and hear about bandits attacking the town in order to get as much money as possible during the bloodline war going on in the Mist Village, making outlying villages easy prey for them as they had no one to call for help. Needless to say once Itachi was on the mission, they didn't last long. The pay was not much but was still plenty for such a war-torn country. After a year of training here Naruto had grown dramatically during his time with his father. With his teachings and the secret of the shadow clone jutsu made learning anything easy for the blonde mastering many jutsu in a day. But Naruto also used this method in his studies while having only one copy of a book Naruto with his clones were reading over 20 different subjects at the same time. His control over his chakra was almost perfect and chakra level was of a high jhanan. Naruto was able to learn every fire jutsu Itachi knew, which was every fire jutsu in the Uchiha vault and some he made. And from D to mid B rank water jutsu that they could get their hands on. His taijutsu could still use some work but that was not Itachi's area of expertise. However Naruto's genjutsu exploded in growth from no talent whatsoever to being near Itachi's equal in the area. And that was Itachi's area of expertise, the one thing Itachi used in battle more than anything. Though however good Naruto was he still preferred ninjutsu and taijutsu over genjutsu but never disregarded its usefulness. In fact Naruto would often start a fight and end it with genjutsu. Itachi couldn't have been prouder of his son's growth. Naruto's looks only changed a little as he let his hair grow so he could put it into a messy but straight ponytail as the rest was still a spiky golden mass. He still wore the very same outfit that he left his village in only now his dark blue jacket was buckled up to help protect him from the damp weather that this land was known for. Swamp, swamp, tree, rock, tree, swamp. Naruto thought out of boredom as he and his father traveled to a bandit camp a few miles out of town. Lesson up Naruto we're getting near our objective, once we reach there you are to scout out the camp before you destroy it. You are doing this on your own as you should be more than skilled enough to handle this. Itachi said as a leader ninja then a father. I understand father I will not mess up and complete the task at hand. Naruto said as a solider in a monotone voice just as his father taught him to. Good now here we go the mission is now underway. After Itachi said his piece both of them disappeared. Naruto hide in the shadow of a weeping willow as he watched the bandits go through their daily routine of going through the small deserted town they took as their own. Which to Naruto was, boring just plain boring, it was like watching people from a normal town do nothing. He didn't expect much but not this. No one was even standing guard around the camp. Maybe they got lazy because of the war. I mean it's not like they can expect any ninja to come after them. Naruto thought with a sweat drop. Then something happened that grabbed Naruto's undivided attention a young boy who looked no older than five was brought into the camp kicking and screaming. He was a small little boy with white hair and red eyes. His skin was lightly tanned from hours out in the sun most likely from working through the day. He was wearing a bright blue shirt with green overalls and brown shoes. His arms were tied behind his back to prevent him from escaping. The man who had been holding the kid was tall muscular man that looked like he used to be a lumberjack with a big bushy beard. He had a black rain jacket on that was zipped up, with grey cargo pants and black work boots. But what stood out was the claymore on his back. The blade was a little shorter than himself and was made of grey iron. Okay you lot put this kid in one of the rooms he is now under our care. Said the lumberjack looking man. No one said anything and just did as told. That confused Naruto a little bit. Hum why would he say, under our care, bandits don't care how they treat people. But the kid may complicit things, from our intel they haven't really done anything that bad. They have yet to kill and haven't wrapped anyone. They have kidnapped people but they were always returned in no worse condition than before they were taken. They're probably got desperate from the lack of jobs and started robbing people. Naruto thought sadly. After a couple of hours the sun started to set and it was time to make his move. Creeping his way into the camp looked for the room where they put the kid. As he traveled through the small encamped town he saw many of the bandits rebuilding the houses making them suitable for living in. Naruto quirked his eyebrows at seeing them do this but moved on. As he went through the village he saw bandits doing other odd things from painting houses to planting flower beds around the houses. 
Coming up to a small house with a warm glow peering out of the window just above his head Naruto's has had enough of not knowing what going on through this village pecked into the window. What he saw next shocked him to his core, dozens of kids and young to old women through the window. All of them were fully clothed and, happy. From the smile on their faces happy with the right word. Then the lumberjack from earlier walked into the room and the room got quiet for a second before the kids busted into cheers and the women laughed at the kids. All of a sudden a little girl ran up to the man and jumped only to be caught and spun around. She was wearing a red dress and had black hair tied into pigtails. Naruto lessened closer to what was being said and said. Daddy did you have an okay trip? The chuckled. Yes it went well sweetheart thank you for asking. I saved a kid today from his oppressed lifestyle. Really what happened? She asked in innocence. Well he was working ungodly hours for an adult and paid next to nothing for it. But that was the only job he could get so he worked it. I found him and when I tried to talk to him about his bloodline he panicked and tried to run but I was able to get him but the town's people showed up and thought I was going to kill him. The man said as the whole room's lesson to him tell the story. What happened next father? Well they were every determined to capture so I ran with him in tow out of the town and led them to the swamps and lost them. He said with a smile as the children had stars in their eyes. Naruto left after the story came to an end and looked around for the kid he took to see if what he said had any merit. He found the white-haired boy quickly and hanged into an unassuming child. Naruto started running up to him in a childlike fashion. Hi are you the boy that was brought here? The boy turned around to see a small boy in a brown shirt and shorts looking at him with big brown eyes. Yes I I'm why do you ask? Wow that's cool so what's your story mister? Well I was born with a bloodline limit like you I imagine, my parents was killed a year ago and I have had the hunters after me ever since. Then that big guy found me and brought me here, at first I thought he was another thug looking for an easy payday. The odd haired boy smiled. Then I come to find out that he brought me to a place filled with bloodline families and that I'm safe here. So that's what is happening around here. Naruto narrowed his eyes. Something is going on and I don't like it. All of a sudden a house exploited tore through the ground, shrapnel flow in the air hitting the works embedding deep into their flesh with a spray of blood, as their bodies were tossed like ragdolls by the force of the explosion. The smell of scorched skin filled the air as some bodies were impaled by large chunks of wood. Out from the smoking wreckage of the house clammed out six men all wearing masks each different from each other. The only one that stood out clothing-wise was the lead in an ocean blue tank top and grey sweat pants with black shoes. His hair short and brown. It looked like he just got out of bed. Hump. We only got a few of them. Sham I was hoping to get at least a dozen. The man said with sick joy displayed in his voice. Breaking the illusion Naruto yelled. What the hell do you think you're doing? Lazily turning his head the man got a good look at Naruto. Oh it's the mercenary we hired to find this little hideout. Reaching behind his back Naruto got into a protective stance. My, my, a jumpy one aren't we? He said with a small chuckle and his men following in his humor. Pulling his arm from behind his back he held up a scroll. Here is your bounty, you earned it child. He toasts the scroll in the air. Catching the scroll Naruto just looked at it. After what seemed like forever Naruto put the scroll inside his coat and looked at the man in his eyes. Naruto eyes looked as cold as a pool of ice as he asked. What are you going to do with them? What do you mean? We're going to kill them of course. He said with his head titled to the side in confusing, and a tone of voice like it was the most known thing in the world. Naruto's face took on a look of horror. What? How could you do that? We can because we can. We'll kill them because it's our job as hunter ninja. The man voice went from passive to a sickening voice of joy and pleasure. And we'll kill them because it's fun, they're nothing but freaks of nature and don't get to live. Ecstasy filled his voice as stopped talking. Then a large fountain of water shot out from right side of them taking two of the men, screaming in pain, out of picture. They were dead if their skeleton showing through their muscle and flesh says anything. Walking out from behind the house was the lumberjack with his clamor resting in his hand as it leaned on his shoulder. Well what do we have here Boyle release? Well I haven't seen that in a while. The hunter turned to face the man who had killed two of his subordinates. Well this is a surprise nice to see you again Dargan. It will be once I remove your head from your shoulders. 
the newly named Dargan said in a calm voice. The hunter removed his mask to show purple eyes and black lipstick and eyeliner. Charming as ever, but can you put your life where your mouth is? We'll see won't we? Don't you boys move this one as my fight. Hum now that I think about it why don't you move back some you wouldn't want to get caught in the middle would you? In response the last of the men scattered. They stood their ground staring at each other trying to intimidate the other. Then they sprang into action Dragon jumped and swung his sword at the hunter only for him to dive to side and throw a couple of shuriken just to come up empty handed when Dargan pulled his sword out of the ground to use as a shield. Using Dargan's shield as a blind the mist hunter snuck around with Kanai in hand and jabbed it into Dargan's kidney. Only for it to turn into water showing the usefulness of water clones. Dargan puffed into existence behind the hunter kicking his back with a heavy blow that sent him flying. Not wasting a step Dargan grabbed his sword ripping it from the ground. Jumping into the air Dargan throw his claymore at the hunter ninja like a javelin, to his surprise the nin turned and grabbed the handle mid-flight turning around from the momentum to impale him through the stomach. Blood spilled from Dargan's body going all over the ground and the hunter nin's arm. With an insane grin on his face the purple-eyed man shoved the sword up in the air droving it deeper into the poor man's body and out the other sided. Then turned the blade downward into the ground nailing the lumberjack of a man to the spot. I have to say that was fun thanks for that. He said Ing Dargan's blood off his arm then stopped and looked at his victim. Oh I'm sorry did you want some? Leaning in closer with a smirk on his face. Dargan hand shot up grabbing the man's neck and squeezed with a vice grip with all his might. The nin thrashed around trying to get free to no anvil so out of desperation he took out a kanai and stabbed the breaded man's wrist getting his freedom. U b a s t e r e d, I'll kill you. Just as the hunter for the mist was about to give the last blow he see something yellow and blew out of the corner of his eye. Acting out of reflex he put his arms for defense but it was for nothing as from the blow itself was more than his quick defense could handle and went flying into an empty house. He busted through the wall like if it was made of paper and with a dust cloud and splinters went up. Naruto looked down at the would-be hero and give a small smile. Sorry about to barge in on your fight but I can't let you die. Naruto looked over at the mist nin who was pulling himself out of the chunks of wood. Don't worry old man I'll take it from here you just worry about yourself. Naruto said with an impassive look and ice cold blue eyes as he stared at the enemies. When the hunter nin got out he was seeing red. First the freak tries to strangle me to death and now this, this brat has the balls to challenge me, me. Getting up and pointing at our blonde hero. Get him I want that blonde dead. The one the do it well get all the money on him. Without a single word the three henchmen nin attacked one with twin scythes, another with a machete, and the last had a long sword. Quickly drawing his sword Naruto meet them head on parrying and blocking their strikes. No matter how hard they pressed they couldn't get past Naruto's defense, until his one swung a slash with his long sword to be blocked that the one with the scythes got him in his spine. Then a puff of smoke reviled it was a piece of lumber. The two men eyes widen as a blade slide in between the ribs of scythe guy with blood spewing from the wound, as long sword wielded man head was separated from his shoulders with a large spray of blood. When the two bodies hit the ground Naruto found two shuriken lugged in his throat. As the hunter nin was about to do his happy dance they both dissolved into water as it felt a lot of pain in the back of his head before he was airborne. He flipped in the air before following the pattern on the ground skipping like a rock on the water. Dargan kept watching couldn't believe his eyes, a child had not only killed without filching and doing so without breaking a sweat. Naruto stood there waiting for one of the two to make his move. Then both broke into action the makeup wearing nin worked his way through hand sign as the other threw a handful of shuriken at Naruto as he ran forward. The blonde jumped over the flying stars of death had made the tiger sign to his lips and used, fire style grand fireball jutsu. A giant fireball easily three times the man's size came rushing at him with no time to doge he was burned to death leaving nothing but ash. Just then the leader of the now deceased Miss Ninja finished the last hand sign. Illusion Art Shark Hunting Ground The ground around Naruto became flooded quickly overtaking area. Naruto opened his eyes to see he was surrounded by five giant great white sharks circulating around him. On the outside the hunter ninja smirked seeing his genjutsu worked as Naruto's head fall down like a drunk. 
Slowly walking over to the boy he pulled out his last kunai to stop in front of the blonde's body. Well I have to say kid you would have made one hell of a mist ninja. If you only would have picked the right sided. Without delay he plugged the knife handle deep into the blonde hair and blood came out of the wound. As Naruto's body started to fall it slowed down to the point it just hung there in the air. Even the droplets were frozen in time. The blood vanished in the air soon after Naruto's body busted into a flock of crows. A then line appeared on the man's face as the pain flashed and blood trickled down his chick. Did you really think you would get me with a sad genjutsu like that? Whispered Naruto in his ear in a monotone voice. He found himself surrounded by four blondes all with an impassive face and cold blue eyes staring at him. Jumping in a twist as he threw four shuriken dead center of their chest. Only they stopped midair and broke apart into crows as well. Now eight stood around him all with the same look and another cut appeared on his face. Panicking he unsealed a short sword tried to cut a path through them only to get sixteen and another shallow cut this time on his arm. This went on for over an hour, an hour of fear and slicing through the blondes only for more to appear and for him to get another cut. Soon a sea of blondes kids stood waiting, watching, and taunting the man with their mere presence. Falling to his knees the hunter ninja couldn't take the pain anymore. Small, shallow cuts were all over his body, his skin stained with his blood. W.H., what are you? The purple eye man asked in a pained voice. I'm a son to a bloodline clan that I didn't use to defeat you. Naruto said as the man passed out from the pain. Breaking the genjutsu the sea of clones faded into nothingness as did the cuts on the man's body. What J, just happened? T.H., the hunter ninja called out a jutsu T.H., then three seconds later he on the ground paw, passed out. Ask Dargan still in pain and nailed to the ground. Simple, he wanted to test genjutsu and lost. Naruto turned to the impaled man and smiled the biggest fox smile. Now let's get you fixed up. After an hour over get Dargan fixed up and the bombardment of thank you from every person in the village Itachi decided to revile himself. Naruto report what happened. After a telling his father the mission from start to finish Itachi face showed a look disappointment. So not only did you stay far after the mission was done you stayed and got involved in something that has nothing to do with us, I might understand that right Naruto. Yes father and I'm not going to regret doing what I did. I saved this people because it was the right thing to do. Naruto said with a heated passion. And if I was to order you to kill each and every one of this people starting with the kids. Itachi said in a dangerous warning tone. I wouldn't do that and I would even fight you to protect them. Naruto screamed at his father on the verge of tears. The thought of killing the one person who loved and took care of him all this time. Then Naruto felt something on top of his head slowly rubbing it. Looking up to see Itachi's hand patting his head. I'm so proud of you son. Doing what's right no matter the cost, even going against me to do it. Itachi had on his largest smile. Happiness and pride in his son shone through. That's my son Naruto. End of flashback jutsu. Naruto was broken from his memory as the instructors opened the doors to allow the students in the building. They shuffled in to learn how to kill the fellow man, well they didn't think of it that way but whatever. Time to see who was in my class. Naruto started his new school year with a strong step. As Naruto walked the halls he memorized the layout of the building for future use. Then he came to his distension. So this is it. Pulling out a piece of paper form his pants pocket. Yup this is it room 102 with Aruka. Putting chakra into his ears to increase his hearing, he could hear the students making idle chatting as they waited for their teacher. Inside the class, the room was filled with students learning to become ninja talking to their friends in small groups. A tanned man walked into the room with a scar going across his nose. He had brown hair pulled into a spiky ponytail. He wore green military vest showing his rack of chunin over his blue long slaved shirt. He leased in on the students banter one group at a time to see if they knew anything about the new student joining their class. So far nothing more than the everyday stuff. That is until he got to Ino Yamananaka with her hair in a ponytail today as to the norm. She was talking to a group of girls with her well-known rival Sakura Haruno. Sakura was a little shorter than Ino with long pink hair and a beautiful shade of green eyes. She wore a red battle dress with black shorts underneath. 
Man I was so scared there were six guys surrounding wanting me to shudder, do things with them. I thought I was going to get gang raped. So what happened then Eno? One of the girls asked. Well just when they were about to pounce a guy around our age came out of nowhere and kicked them all away like they were nothing. I didn't even see him until he stopped moving. Wow he must be really fast then. Is he a ninja? Another asked. Not officially he was being trained outside of the village for three years but come back for graduation next year. Eno said. What does he look like? Asked Sakura this time. He's a little taller than me with blonde hair and has bright blue eyes, but what stuck out the most was the whiskers makers on his cheek. She said with a finger on her chin as she recalled the boy's looks. What whiskers? Did he draw the on? The pink haired girl asked. I don't think so. She said as she shakes her head. They seemed more like birthmarks. I wonder if his from a clan. That would make sense. I mean look at the Inazuka clan with the K9 teeth or Hyuga with their eyes. A random girl said. What is his name Ino? Sakura asked with a raised eyebrow. I don't remember the whole thing happened so fast. Ino sank into her arms and pouted. Baruka knew that was all the information he was going to get out of his students. All right clam down everyone I have important information for you all. The students went dead silence at this. Okay, that was fast, maybe we should get new students more often. Baruka sweat dropped. Anyways we have a new student joining us today please show respect and good manners this is his first time ever stepping foot into a classroom and we don't want to leave a bad inspiration. Naruto took this as his time to knock on the door. Oh that must be him now. Every eye in the room shifted to the door. Please come in and introduce yourself to your classmates. After he said the door slowly opened and a blonde haired boy walked in. Eyes bulged at seeing what he was wearing. Naruto wore a black male tank top with a red Uzumaki spiral that showed his very toned muscle that wasn't too bulky as to get in the way. It was something he gained in his years of training. The shirt was over a steel fish net shirt to help his overall protection. His black cargo pants had a sliver chain buckled to the first hoop of his pants to the third. The black ninja sandals he wore had his pants tucked into it and wrapped around his ankles in white bandages. He didn't want his jacket as it may let now to who he was. His blonde hair was wild and untamed in the front expect two strained bangs framing his face perfectly. His whisker marks gave him a feral look that made many girls blush. His brilliant blue eyes were soft and warm but had a look that demanded respect adding to the blush of the girls already had. Hello my name is Naruto and I'll be in your class until we graduate. His said with a foxy smile and wave showing his bandaged hand. Sakura saw his hand with her curiosity get the better of her asked. Why is your hand bandaged? Did you hurt it or something? Or something, I really don't like tell people about it if I don't know them well. Anyways I hope we can get along. Naruto said with a large grin. So what were you doing all this time? An unimportant boy asked. Naruto closed his eyes as if thinking about how to answer. Slowly opening his eyes Naruto mouth pulled upward into a confident smirk. I have been training to be a strong ninja to protect the people who matters more to me than my own life. Everyone was so quit a pin dropping could be heard from down the hall. WH, what is this really the Kyubi brat? Aruka thought eyes as large as dinner plates. A small smile came to his face as Aruka closed his eyes. Maybe I was wrong after all. He has a good sprit and strong heart. This is the boy who saved me, Eno, were the thought of Eno and Sakura both with small blushes. All right then Naruto you may choose any open set for the day. I'll assign you a permanent set tomorrow. Oh and I'll be asking you a lot of questions today to see how far you are in your studies. Naruto just nodded his head as he started walking up the rows trying to find a set when a flash of blonde caught his eye. With a quick double take Naruto stopped mid stride blue eyes meeting together. With a quick turn Naruto looked at the platinum blonde girl. I know you. Flexing the muscle in his legs Naruto gave what looked like a weak hop that shouldn't even get an inch off the ground, only to appear a foot higher than the desk and onto it, in front of Eno in a crouching position their faces only inches away from each other. You're Eno right, how are you doing? Sporting a deep scarlet face blush, that would be challenge to even Hinata. I, I'm fine th, thank you. That's good make sure you take care of yourself okay Eno-chan. A fox-like grin spread across his face. 
After getting a nod from Ino Naruto simply walked off the desk to the back of the room and grabbed an empty set at a desk by himself. Uruka started his lesson for the day as soon as Naruto's ass hit the chair. Over three hours of mind-numbing lectures and answering questions by Naruto later it was time for lunch much to Naruto's happiness. As the students started to try to get through the door Naruto just opened a window next to his desk and jumped out of it into the courtyard much to his teacher's displeasure. He walked around the small training ground of the academy to find a large tree in a small meadow its leaves shadow from the hot afternoon sun perfect for taking a nap. As Naruto lays down under the shifting leaves with a light, and soft breeze passing through, the sky above was clear and seemed the brightest blue the sky could ever give. Such a nice day I don't get many days like this. The blonde Uchiha thought, I wonder what Q-chan is doing. Ah uh, it's nice to know you think about me Naruto-kun. Makes a girl want to blush. The Kyubi said sarcastically in Naruto's mind. Q-chan, hey you're talking to me again. Naruto couldn't stop the small smile on his face. It turned into a frown as he asked. Are you still mad at me it's been over two weeks? I don't care. What you did was stupid. I'm sorry I didn't think it would turn out like that. A foxy grin spread across Naruto's face. If you forgave me I'll do that special thing you like so much later tonight. Naruto could feel the blush coming from the Kyubi. That's mean Naruto-kun. You can't use that against me. Sue you don't want it. Naruto teased knowing it would drive her mad. Naruto you're so mean you can't do this to me. The fox demon said in the cutie's way she could. Well I gouse since you don't want it or forgive me I'll just go and find something to do tonight. I, if I forgive you well you really do it for me. She said shyly. Naruto smirked in victory. Yes I will, hum if you forgive me now I might throw in something a little extra. Okay I forgive you Naruto-kun. Naruto could feel the heat coming from his vixen in waves. You better have not said that just to get out of trouble Naruto or I'll be three times as mad. I wouldn't think about it Q-chan. Said a now slightly nerves Naruto. Hey your name's Naruto right? Said a lazy sounding voice from behind. Get this right and you get a cookie. Yes it is and you are. Naruto said as he turned to see a boy around his age with a bored expression on his face. He looked to be a little shorter than himself, his hair pulled back into a short spiky pineapple-like tail. His brown eyes looked calculating as he stared at Naruto. He is wearing a light gray jacket with a binge outline and fishnet undershirt. Dark brown pants with bandage wrapped around his right leg with his shrunken pouch over top of it and navy blue sandals. Shikamaru Nara nice to meet you. He said unmoving and motive. Hey Shika so this is where you took off to should have known it's the shadiest place at the academy. Said F.A. Death glare from the boy um. Plump young man in a dark green waist-length coat with a tan shirt and brown shorts. Bandages wrapped around his legs and arms showed. Red swirls present on his cheeks. And he, was eating a large bag of chips. That's Choji Akamichi. I'm sure he's happy to meet you as well. Muttered the bored Nara as the Akamichi nodded. Nice to meet you both. Naruto said with a smile. Can we set with you? Asked Choji. Sure I don't see why not it's not like I own it. Naruto shrugged giving his response. Taking a set the three sat in silence enjoying the afternoon sun. The piece was a nice change for the blonde, all the fighting and blood had been all his known for three years. This place was peaceful and so calming. Naruto's eyes started to close slowly drifting to sleep. I may like it here after all. He thought as sleep overcame him. Three months later, school for him was slow. Everything Aruka was teaching was just review for our hero. Naruto became the top student getting A's on everything thing they did. Slowly a fan club formed for the blonde although small they made their self known. Naruto, Shikamaru, and Choji became friends over the days. Came to find out Naruto and Shikamaru are equal in Shogi. Well at least Naruto thought so, Shikamaru was sure the blonde was holding back. As it stood the score was Naruto 3 wins, Shikamaru 3 wins, and 250 ties. Ino has been getting closer to Naruto to be on friendly terms but not really friends as she's still a Sasuke fangirl with no real feeling for her fellow blonde. Ha 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 man is she in denial. Man Naruto you need to stop holding back. Said the annoyed Nara. Jesse Shika I keep telling you I'm not. Said a grumpy Naruto. Why won't you believe I'm taxed as it is? Because, 
you're not even looking at the ing board and still tied with me. The almost always clam gifted young man shouted causing everyone in the schoolyard to look at them. Naruto pulled down his book that his face was in until now to look at his friend with a quirked eyebrow. Looking down at the board Naruto's face took a look of amazement. I thought we stopped playing some time ago. Shikamaru's eyebrow twitched as a tick mark appeared on his head. He was playing me to a standstill without knowing he was playing the game. What the hell is with this guy? Naruto looked at the board for a second before moving a piece. Checkmate, was all he said before going back to book. Looking over the board looking for any way out but couldn't find any. Damn it, the shadow user said then laid down closing his eyes. Hey Shikamaru, grunt from said boy, do you think you'll ever really beat Naruto? Asked our hefty friend. If Naruto was to try I don't think I would even stand a chance. Mama, you're thinking too highly of my ability Shika and underestimating yourself. Said the bored blonde. In any case we better get to class guys. Said the Akamichi as his opened a bag of chips. As they took off to class a pair of onyx eyes looked though the bushes. Standing up we see a boy with dark hair in the shape of a duck's ass come out. He was wearing a dark blue shirt with a high collar in tan shorts with white armbands. His shirt had the Uchiha fan on the back showing him to be Sasuke Uchiha the second highest student in the academy and class heart throb with Naruto only second by a few girls. How strong are you really Naruto? The boy thought to himself. And who in the world are you? After the class got assembled most of the class talked to each other except Sasuke who was trying to find out who Naruto was. Shikamaru who slept with Choji eating beside him, and Naruto who had his legs up on his disc thinking about a new jutsu he wanted to try out. Okay class clam down we got important stuff to go over. The class seemed to get even louder pissing Aruka off. Shut the hell up you brats. He yelled at the top of his voice with his fame's demon enlarged head jutsu. As I was saying in a few months we'll be have full contact sparing next month as to get back into the grove of fight has its put off for half a year in order to help perfect your styles of fighting on your own. This got the student exited to prove themselves and to see what the new blonde kid could really do. Well that all on that matter, now we'll be going over the theory of nin, gen, and taijutsu for the rest of today followed by a test on what we learned about politics outside of the village. One month later on the sparing ground. Naruto watched as many of the no-name student fought, he could say for academy students they were good and had potential but would get splattered on any field mission above C rank, but that's what John and Sansei's are for. He couldn't get a good read off of Shikamaru and Choji because they got paired and both quit not wanting to fight their friend. But Naruto knew that Shika would be able to think his way out of most problems, and if Choji was on his team it'd be even easier due to the Akamichi fighting style. Ino and Sakura were above the other students but would die like them if they didn't have good backup. A boy in a tan high collar coat with spiky brown hair and black shads fight poorly. However if Naruto was right he was an Aburame so without the use of his chakra eating bugs his style was pointless to begin with. The fertile Inazuka in a grey jacket with fur lining, he had enlarged K9 teeth with red fang marks on his cheeks. His dog Akamaru was a white half-wolf pup with spots on his ears that stood off to the side. He was properly one of the best taijutsu user he had seen so far, most likely because his family fighting mostly with fits to begin with. Hanada Hayuga there was something that caught his eye. The girl was beautiful in her own right. Her perfectly heart-shaped face and lavender hair was a whining combo on their own. Her eyes didn't seem to have a pupil if you didn't look close enough. Her larger baggy coat made it hard to tell her cup size put he put it low to mid D's. Anyways for getting the pervert and onto her fighting style. Thought the blushing blonde, hey what did you think at me? You heard me you pervert, arrow rider. Shut up or I'll turn this in a boy on boy story with you and Sasuke as lovers. I'll be good, thought a defeated blonde. The girl was far more skilled than she let on. Is she misleading people or is it because of low self-esteem? Seeing the girl's sad look on her face he believed the second thought was the correct one. Naruto Uzumaki vs Sasuke Uchiha, Baruka yelled snapping Naruto out of his thoughts. As the two warriors made their way to ring hushed whispers rang thought out the ninja in training. In the audiences, who do you think will win? My money is on Sasuke he is the strongest out of our class. 
said one nameless student to another said student. Ham I think the new kid will win as strong as Sasuke as we don't know how strong this Naruto guy is. You're crazy no can beat Sasuke-kun, says a fan girl with several other nodding in agreement with her. Don't count him out yet we know next to nothing about him, he's a wild card in this whole deck. The gifted Nara said. Shut up Shikamaru you're just a lazy bum so no one cares what you say. A devoted fan girl said with passion. That doesn't change the fact that Shikamaru right, he's a wild card. Anything could happen with this fight. Thought a pale boy with black hair and eye in a black long sleeved shirt with the right arm cut off. He wearing black pants and sandals with bandages wrapped around his left leg. He is known as Sai an agent of Danzo. With the fighters. Once the young ninja got into the arena they stared into each other's eye in a battle of wells. Well at least he knows the importance of controlling his enemy mentally. An arrogant smirk spread across Sasuke's face as he said. Just give up now and save yourself from looking like the baka you are. Or not, Naruto thought with a sweat drop. Tempting but I'll pass see how you won't even land a hit on me. Sasuke got pissed instantly. All right you two get ready. Sasuke shifted into interceptor fist. Get set. Naruto yet to move from his lazy standing position he had in the first place, doing his best to copy a statue. Go, Uruka said as he jumped out of the way. As soon as Uruka was out of the way Sasuke charged determined to show our blonde not to mess with an Uchiha. Lol the fool, running at speeds the other students had a hard time keeping up with, running at blonde Uchiha with his fist ed back ready to cause damage. But to Naruto he was painfully slow, just as Sasuke's fist about to make contact it was stopped by Naruto's open palm. Sasuke then felt a massive amount of pain in his stomach as he was sent airborne from a palm strike from Naruto. Forcing away the pain for now Sasuke flipped in the air landing just a few inches from the boundary. What the hell was that? Sasuke wondered. Doesn't matter he won't get me this time. Sasuke ran as fast as his legs would carry him then jumping into a flying kick aimed at the blonde's ribcage that Naruto caught with one hand. Sasuke the jerked his body to send another at Naruto's head, so our hero let go of Sasuke's leg and crouched down sending the kick over his head. Adjusting his leg Sasuke landed on it and used his body's momentum for a spin kick only for it to be caught like if it was just hanging there. Not giving a second to breath Naruto pushed Sasuke's standing leg giving the raven-haired Uchiha a charlie horse but that was not the end of his pain. Standing as soon as pushed the leg making it buckle, with a tight grip, lifted Sasuke of the ground to slam him back into it making spider web creaks. Before Sasuke could slip into unconsciousness Naruto kicked him in his chest making him fly across the field into a tree making said tree nearly give way under that amount of force. W winner by ass KIC, I mean knock out Naruto Uzumaki. Said a god smacked Uruka. With the students, W what the hell just happened? Asked Sakura. Naruto just kicked the shit out of Sasuke. A male student said scared of the blonde boy. That's not the only thing. Said Shikamaru looking at the whiskered boy. What do you mean Shika? Choji asked for once not eating anything being too shocked to think about food. What I mean is Naruto didn't move from his spot, not once. That made everyone deathly quiet. Gradation day. The whole year went by with Naruto at the head of the class and Sasuke close second. No one wanted to fight the blonde for fear of getting hurt but Sasuke, who seen Naruto as an obstacle to overcome so he could be in honor to the Uchiha name. But he always got his ass handed to him. Sasuke was still the favored one out of the two from the female population but either really cared. Naruto, Shikamaru, and Choji became closer in their friendship and trained together every now and again. They even managed to get Hinata into their little gang slowly bring her confidence to new highs. Is she still a shy girl? Yes but she started to show real promise that even her father stopped belittling her. Naruto showed them how to do the shadow shuriken jutsu that made solid copies for a short time. Everyone was waiting for Uruka to come in and give the last test to see if they were ready to be ninja everybody was fully of confidence but Naruto's gang. They were watching Naruto and Shikamaru play another game of shogi, Naruto making Shikamaru rethink his strategies three times now. Ok class time for testing I'll call your names one by one to see if you're ready to be ninja. 
As you know Hokage-sama has sent a janin to help with the test as Mizuki was caught trying to alter test scores a month ago and is now away for 30 years getting a daily colonoscopy. Hate that guy and I don't want to do the whole forbidden scroll thing. Baruka handed out the writing and all got to work on the papers in front of them. Naruto's eyes scanned the room as he wrote down answers. Shika we most likely only do enough to pass God is he lazy. Choji well second guess himself and get most of them wrong due to his poor self-esteem poor guy, he should make it through. Shifting his eye they land on the two top Sasuke fan girls. Ino should pass above average but it should be higher. I really wish she take being a ninja more seriously I hope that will change soon. Sakura well most likely have the second highest score next to me after all she is a bookworm. Naruto shifted his eye over to Kiba, Shino and Sai. Kiba will pass, Barley. Shino should score pretty high he's almost a genus. And then there's Sai whom I can't get a reading off of, what is he playing at? I can tell he shouldn't be in the academe because he's holding back. Is he trying to give himself an edge out on the field by making people underestimating him? Shifting his eyes to the last two students of interest the young Uchiha and Hayuga. Hanata should do just fine thanks to her boost in confidence. Then there's Sasuke. Number 3 in this test easy. I wonder what he's thinking right now. Must beat him must beat him I must beat him. Sasuke thought as he scribbled down answers. I'm most likely thinking about how great he is. 1 hour and 20 minutes later. After the writing test came the physical test. The name of the game last as long as you could against your chunin teacher. Most of the students lasted around 3 minutes Shika included because that was the all you needed to pass. Lazy Sog. Naruto thought with good humor. Choji lasted 3 minutes and 45 seconds mostly because he didn't want to accidentally hurt Uruka. Shino last just over 3 minutes with his poor taijutsu. Ino and Sakura didn't fare much better than the Abarame. Kiba lasted around 4 minutes and 30 seconds no real shock there. Sai made it so he lasted 4 minutes flat. Hanada lasted as long as Sai did but with more grace. Sasuke lasted 5 minutes and 30 seconds with impressive skill and stamina, well for an academe student anyways. Naruto played with Aruka for 6 minutes and 45 seconds before he took a dive and everyone knew, but the Jonin and Sasuke's pride. He did as well not that anyone said anything with the Jonin there. Now they were at the last test the ninjutsu portion of the graduation test and no surprise that everyone so far passed. Naruto walked up to Aruka and the Jonin that was behind desk. Okay Naruto you just need to use transformation jutsu, substitution with something, and use the simple clone jutsu. Maybe I should have some fun with this Naruto thought with a smile. In a plume of smoke Naruto transformed into the Jonin and looked around. Impressive Naruto now substitute with something. The Jonin beside Uruka smiled at Uruka. I already did Uruka sensei. A puff of smoke later Naruto fox grin was in full blast. Uruka head turned so fast you would have thought his neck broke. Well okay then Naruto now make at least three working clones before I, substitute, you with a corpse. Uruka said with a tick mark at Naruto antics. Replacing himself with the poor John and Naruto stood where they at the start. Naruto without movement or saying a word created 20 perfect illusionary clones. Throwing his voice so it appeared to come from everywhere Naruto asked. Well do I pass Uruka sensei. Hey, hey you pass you little show off. Uruka said with a warm smile. Uruka didn't know when but at some point Naruto managed to warm his way into a special place in his heart. Naruto went from the Kyubi brat to his favorite student and now his little brother. Okay Naruto I got something for you. My head band. Yes but I went and got a special order for you to match your style of clothing. Uruka walked from behind his desk to in front of Naruto and handed him a headband that was scuffed and had nicks in it. It looked like it'd been in many battles. It was on a black cloth and engraved with an arrow-like leaf cravings into a spiral like the Uzumaki clan crest. Naruto took into his hands, his finger ran over the headband, that was my headband and now it's yours. Thank you Uruka sensei I will always keep it close to me. Naruto said in his most respectful voice and bowed. Okay will you go out and shown the class one of the newest ninjas to the leaf village. In the classroom when Naruto is taking his test. Many kids talked to one another about how they were so excited about being a ninja and wonder who was going to be on their team. 
Up in high corner of the room you see Naruto's small group of friends talking amongst their selves. So Shikamaru who do you think well be on teams? Asked our potato chip loving friend. Choji why are you asking such a troublesome question? The lazy Nara replied. Oh come on Shikamaru you think that way about everything. And besides you're the only one out of us who could get it as close as possible with the team placement. What about Naruto why can't you ask him? Simple he's not here right now. A tick mark appeared on the genus Nara's head. So I'm just the fall back guy when Naruto isn't around. Whatever it doesn't matter at this point, but I will say this. I have no idea what they're going to do with Naruto. What do you mean Shikamaru? The Hyuga princess asked. I mean Naruto is stronger than any of us and the most well-rounded ninja out of anyone in our class. He could be paired with any team a person could imagine. Man I didn't even think about that. We could never see Naruto again. The sad Akamichi said with a downcast look and Hinata following his lead. Don't be stupid. We'll see him again after all we're all ninja in the same village, we're bond to cross paths again. Said Shikamaru with a surprising amount of passion in his voice and the same hard determined look that Naruto would give in order to lift their spirits. Seeing the look in Shikamaru's eyes that reminded them of their unofficial leader and made Choji and Hinata smile. I think you've been hanging around Naruto too long because you look just like him. Said Choji with a smile across his face. Shikamaru blinked with a blank look on his face. Then slowly a small smile broke as he began to chuckle. I think you're right Choji, the dame troublesome blonde has infected me. It was Choji and Hinata's turn to laugh until they all broke out into uncontrollable laughter. What you guys laughing at? Asked the newly minted blonde ninja. Oh nothing Naruto-kun. The quiet voice of Hinata rang out with joy. Okay if you say so. So it looks like we all became ninja after all. All like you could be ninja. You most likely stole your headband you troublesome blonde. Shikamaru sarcastically replied. Hum did you say some shika? Naruto said as he looked up from his book. Where did that book even come from? Shikamaru screamed. What are you talking about? Came Naruto's monotone voice making him sound bored. I had it on me the whole time you just need to pay closer attention to things. You're doing this to mess with me aren't you? A bright smile came across Naruto's face. Yup, was Naruto's simple happy chirp. I hate you. You love me. You're too troublesome. I keep you on your toes. Everyone around them in earshot was trying their hardest not to laugh and failing until they busted into hysterical laughter. After all only Naruto could get a real reaction from Shikamaru and get him flustered. Uruka walked into the room and saw every person around Naruto dying from laughter and couldn't help the smirk from forming on his face. Okay everyone that clam down I don't know what Naruto did, insert a complaint from Naruto, but you need to know you have come back here for team placement in two day. See you then. Uruka waved and out like a hurricane the class went. After the students left Uruka started to work on making the teams but after counting them up he makes a troubling discovery. There one more student then needed to make even teams. Putting down his pen Uruka took a deep breath. What am I going to do? Is something troubling you Uruka? Quickly standing Uruka gave a deep bow. Hokage-sama, standing back up, what are you doing here? I'm here to see how the team placement is going. The aged cage said. Not good Hokage-sama. Oh having trouble coming up with teams are you? He said as he took out his corn pipe and started to light it. No that's not it Hokage-sama I have most of them done but we have a spare student that I don't know what to do with. After breathing out a puff of smoke he spoke. Let me see what you have so fair. Taking a set Uruka give him the list. As the old cage shifted through the list and writing some stuff down the Hokage handed the papers back. They're all done. Now you are to present this to your class tomorrow as it is and that's in order. After he finished Sarutobi disappeared in a small whirlwind of leaves leaving a confused Aruka. With Naruto. After saying goodbye to his friends he went off to train in order to keep his skills sharp as always. Soon his six hours were spent and he headed home. Naruto opened the door to his apartment and found it perfectly clean just like he left it and he smiled at that. It was nice to come back to a place he could call home after three years never staying in one place for more than a week, and the year of coming back to one place was a more than welcome change. Closing his door Naruto started on his dinner and had some shadow clones write some jutsu ideas he had. 
Even the four months in sauna didn't give many wind types jutsu so coming up with his own would be nice and a must. But the problem is he he can't get them as strong as he needed them. I need to find a teacher who knows more about wind chakra. After dinner and a quick shower thought he would visit his favorite fox so he meditated in the middle of his living room. Feeling a familiar pull Naruto opened up his eyes to see the dark fox caged and walked through. As soon as Naruto's head passed through the cage it transformed into a large house. Oak wooden floors were throughout the house. Red painted walls with some pictures hung on them. A large fireplace sat at one corner of the room that never went out with white coaches and chairs around it making it the living room. Walking through the house to find his, little fox, Naruto passed a fully stocked kitchen and went straight to the many bedrooms the house held. Naruto changed this part of his mind form the Kyubi but she designed it. Checking room after room Naruto started to become nerves. I hope she's not in that one. Hope Naruto but at same time hoping she was. And as luck would depending on how you see it. His vixen was setting on a bed in the very middle of the room and was exposed with only a black lacy bra that was barely holding her bust and panties that helped to show her perfectly shaped hips and long legs. Her long, smooth crimson hair went halfway down her back to show off her toned stomach. Around her neck was a black collar with a blue circle with, seal, writing in the middle of it. After taking off the handcuffs the two laid into each other's arms as they snuggled closer together. I love you Naruto-kun, said a sleepy Kyubi as she yawned. I love you too Q-chan. Naruto didn't know how long they sat there in each other's embrace the scent of sex in the air. He still couldn't believe that she loved him so and still couldn't figure out how or when it happened. But that was a thought for another day. Naruto sat up on the bed waking the half-asleep redhead beside him. Um where are you going Naruto-kun? Asked the groggy demon. I'm sorry Q-chan but I have to go. Naruto said as he pulled her into. Not a lust filled one like he did when they began, but filled with loving, tender. It was soft, sweet and poured every bed of love he could muster. I'll talk to you later okay? Okay Naruto-kun talk to you later. Bye I love you, he exclaimed as he faded out. Real world, Naruto awake to a stiff body but the sum starches unlock all the muscles. After taking a shower to clean up the mess, again Naruto claimed into bed. It's really annoying that happens out here but there's no one to clean it up. With a huff Naruto drifted off to sleep the next two days would be spent on training and his, for now, one girlfriend. Two days later, at the academy the students were all in their homeroom waiting to find out who would be on their team. While very one was talking now was in the back paying close attention to his, desk, as he snored. Hey should we walk him up? Asked on student to another. He he totally it not every day someone gets the drop on Uzumaki. Said the other. And it not today either. Said Naruto in an evil manner scaring the hell out of the two boys. Okay class that's enough of that as we have important things to go through. Baruka exclaimed. First I want to. He went on about what it means to be ninja now and that they're adults and to show the village pride in a very long winded speech. Okay now to the teams. Skipping the one to six because they suck. Team 7 will be Sasuke Uchiha, Sakura Haruno yes take that Ino pig. Rigat and Sai, your team leader Kakashi Hitaki. Team 8 will be Kiba Inazuka, Hinata Hayuga, and Shin Aburame with Kurenai. Team 9 is still active so Team 10 will be Ino Yumenka, Shikamaru Nara, and Choji Akamichi lead by Asuma. The kids started to talk thinking that was everyone until Uruka started talking again. And the newly made team squid number. Team Zero is made of Naruto Uzumaki and, that's it. Well I guess it is good luck to you all. Uruka had a really big sweat drop. The class was like a beehive with the one man team now in circulation. And because of it Naruto fangirl's popularity skyrocket so the poor blonde Uchiha did the only thing he could, he whimpered. Naruto woke up to the sounds of leaves swaying in the wind and the sun beating down on his face. Naruto eyes peered opened and looked around with his blurry vision to make out the fuzz surrounding of green everywhere he looked. As his vision cleared he made out branches and the ocean of leaves that gave Kanahagakur its name. Looking down he was at least 15 feet in the air setting up right. His clothes were ripped and torn in veering places but that was normal for the blonde thanks to his training. Tailors make a lot of money off of Naruto. How did I get up here? Thought the confused blonde. 
Hum I remember leaving the academy and, oh that's right I remember now. Flashback. Naruto just left the academy after team announcements and was on his way to get ramen for lunch as is his custom. Naruto for all his skills didn't notice the slowly growing crowd in the dark shadowing their faces. There his is on his way to get ramen again, said one of the shadowy figures in a hushed whisper that couldn't be heard expect by the group. Another's eye gleamed, let's get him as he eats his ramen. He'll let his guard down then and we'll be able to get him. The other nodded and slowly they disappeared into the shadows. As Naruto walked a cold chill ran down his spine. Shaking it off Naruto continued to fallow his stomach to Ichiraku's ramen. After getting to Ichiraku's Naruto quickly inhaled eight bowls of ramen when a small army of Kunoichi appear around corners and rooftop in the middle of the street. Naruto's danger since kicked in as the female's lust poured from their teenage bodies. Turning over so slowly Naruto eyes landed apron the army of hormone driving fan girls. Swallowing the lump in his throat Naruto started to sweat profusely. What did I do now? The Kunoichi's eyes shadow over as an evil smile spread across any of their faces. Oh god what the hell did I do now? Naruto tensed as he sweated bullets at this point. So Naruto did the only thing a guy fearing for his life from women could do. He ran as fast as he could. Naruto-kun come back here and give me your child. One of the fangirl screamed as she ran after the blonde with the others hot on her heels saying similar things. And they were closing in fast. God why did I choose today of all days to increase my weights? Naruto yelled at the top of his lungs hoping to get an answer from some deity only to get the excited squeals from his fan club. Oh gods Naruto-kun so strong to outrun us with new weights. Please give me your child Foxy-kun. One of the girls looked confused as she asked, how would a few weights change anything? The older members note age as in how long they've been fangirls not their real age, got a smug look on their faces. Well as long as we have known Foxy Kun he never did the easy way of anything and often puts another 100 pounds every time his increases his weights. After a few seconds it's CED inside the minds of the younger members. Give me two hours Naruto. Just two hours in bed with you. They ran after him with newfound energy. This is getting ridicules, Naruto shouted in his mind. I have to lose them somehow. It was then Naruto saw his exit as he was quickly coming on an alleyway. Naruto made a sharp turn into it but he knew it was a dead end. Without stopping he jump on to the wall to his left and springboarded onto a fire escape on the opposite side with a graceful flip. This left many fan girls crying out his name at how cool he was, and Naruto drank it all in loving the attain he received from the female population. I thank you ladies for your affection but I have to go now. Naruto said with a bow and a shit-eating grin. With a strong leap Naruto landed on the rooftop and took off as fast as he could. He could hear the cries of the girl and almost felt bad, almost. But it wasn't to last as they caught back up to the blonde hero in a horde of hormonal teenage girls. Why does this keep happening to me? By now his cloths had many rips from the girls trying to pin Naruto down. It was kind of scary to Naruto as he thought about how good they would be as ninja if they applied their skills to their training. Because we love you Naruto-kun, was the response from his stack, or I mean his fans. Please go train. I don't want any of you to get hurt because you went after me by putting off your training. He screamed hopping it would stop them from casing him. Too bad it had the opposite effect by driving the girls even wilder saying how, their Naruto-kun cared for them. It wasn't wrong he did care what happened to them just not the way they thought he did. After three hours Naruto finally lost them in the forests of Kanahagakur as he hid in a tree far above their heads. Naruto liked two things about fan girls. One he loved the attain they throw at him, Naruto would always be nice to them with a wave, a smile and occasional good morning. Maybe that was one of the reason they liked him over the icy Sasuke who never said anything and glared at most people. The second reason was they help with his escaping skills and his physical endurance from running away from them so they didn't wrap him and he in turn became a father of twenty or so children. Flashback End the search for the blonde Uchiha lasted until dusk as the fangirls looked for said blonde and he fell asleep in the leafy haven. Now Naruto had to change and go out get a mission or several. After a long and shadow, avoid the fangirls. Filled walk home. A quick shower and breakfast Naruto was off to his first official mission. Minus 20 minutes later, 
Naruto arrived at a tall red building with a large wall going around it. It was around three stories in height and had a symbol meaning fire in black in a red circle in the front. On the roof was six, twenty feet high white pillars that circle around the roof which was the same shape as the whole tower. The new genin walked right into the tower and straight into the mission hall. It is a fairly large room that was able to hold the large tables and many chairs inside of it. To Naruto's great surprise there sat in the middle was his grandfather figure wearing the Hokage robes and hat. Quickly walking up to the desk Naruto waved at the aged Hokage. Hey Oji-san how are you? You ready to hand over that hat yet? Naruto yelled with his foxy smile shocking all but the third in the room. More than you know, as soon as I find someone capable I'll throw it at them. The old cage said poking at Naruto. Hey someone has to be prepared to take over when you finally kick the bucket you old monkey. Naruto said with a victory smirk. Hum that may be true but the people well want to be able to see their leader and you don't fit the height requirement. He said as the man filled his tobacco pipe. Sure but people want to be able to talk to their Hokage without him turning up his hearing aid. Oho to Shay Naruto kun, okay you win this round but the next one will be harder I unsure you. Serutobi lit his pipe as he went back to shuffling papers seemingly ignoring the god smacked expression on their faces. So what can I do for you today Naruto kun? Well I'm looking for missions but I know as a genin I have to do a number of D rank missions before I move on to higher ones. I'm question is how many? Naruto, you not only do you charge in here but you openly mock the Hokage. Your Hokage, and then you have the nerve to ask for a mission. Uruka asked. Yep that's pretty much it. Naruto dead pen causing all but two occupants of the room to face fault. So about the missions Oji-san. You need at least 25 D rank missions then improvement from your squad leader in order to get one C rank. He said as he took a puff. So how many will you be taking today Naruto-kun? How many do you have available today? 127. How many do your genin teams finishes in a day? Around 49 mission per day including Lo Chunin. The Hokage said. I'll take 75 right now and have them in by the end of the day. Okay here you go Naruto. The aged Hokage said as he handed over a basket full of missions. See you soon Oji-san, Naruto said as he ran downstairs. In front of the tower. Naruto sat in front of the tower and looked over the scrolls to sort them into groups. When Naruto finished he stood up and crossed his fingers for his favorite jutsu. Massive shadow clone jutsu. Teams of three clones puffed out nothing and looked at their creator. Okay each teams well take one scroll and finish by 7 pm and return here with the mission report and I want each one to be a success got it. As one the army of blonde shinobi pushes their feet together and saluted shouting, sir yes sir. Before doing their appointed task. Okay 222 clone for 74 missions was a little harder than I thought it was going to be. But I got my own mission to do. With that Naruto took off. Naruto doesn't use such large numbers as often. The Yamanaka flower shop. Ino sat behind the counter of her flower shop in deep thought. Today she had her first team meeting only to find out that she was even a real ninja yet. Hearing the doorbells chime she pushed her personal problems aside. Hello welcome to the Yamanaka family flower shop how may I help you? Ino said with her eyes closed and a cute smile across her face. Yes I'm here for a mission assigned to me. Ino opened her eyes at the sound of her ex. Classmate and fallow blonde. Naruto. She walked out from around the counter. You came for a mission. Yep I have the scroll right here. He said handing Ino the scroll. Okay I guess I'll lead you to my mother as she's the one who put in the request. Naruto simply nodded and followed Ino into the garden. So we haven't talked much during the academy, I'm sorry about that it's not like I didn't want to. It's okay Ino we were both busy with your own lives. It's not like we were best friends we knew each other for a day before I started. Naruto said with a soft caring smile that made Ino blush and turn her head away. Ino who's your friend, said Ino's mother as she stood up from her flower bed. This is Naruto mom and his here for the mission you put in. That's right Miss Yamanaka here's the scroll as proof. Naruto stated as he handed the scroll over. Giving a quick check over the blonde woman nodded. Okay that's great news as you came at the perfect time. I need flowers delivered today at this address, 
she said as she handed him a slip of paper. It was meant for two days from now but it got pushed up to today. You got it, I'll have it done before you know it. He said with a goofy but charming grin. The flowers are in these six boxes. Eno's mother said as she pointed to the wooden boxes on the other side of the garden. Two shadow clones puffed into existence without Naruto making a move or saying anything. With one hand picked up two of the large boxes and applied chakra to keep them from slipping. Be back in a few seconds please fill out the form Miss Yamanka. With that he left with his clones close behind. So Eno was that the boy who saved you all so long ago from the rapists? The blonde hair mother asked. Tilting her head to one side Eno looked confused at her mother. Yeah that was him why? All of a sudden Eno's mother smile curled upward with a gleam in her eye. It was making Eno very nerves. You never invited him over for dinner like I asked. Eno started to sweat profusely. Um, I forgot too. Well then I guess I'll just do it myself. She said as she walked into the house to tell her husband about their appended dinner guest. Wonder what that face was about. Minus ten minutes later. Naruto returned to find Eno and her parents out front of their shop waiting for him. Eno looked passive and her mother was smiling softly, but Eno's father looked a little mad or maybe wary of him. Mission is complete within time limit and to the letter. Naruto said in a very business-like manner. Very good here's the form and thank you for help. The Yamanaka matriarch said as she handed over the form. We like to invite you to dinner with us tonight. Oh thank you but I have to hand in my mission reports. That shouldn't take more than a few seconds. I have done a lot of missions today it take me a while to do them all. Then that's all the more reason to eat dinner with us. You'll be hungry from all of your hard work. She tries to persuade. Then I guess I have to if you insist. Perfect. When do you think you'll be done? She asked as she clapped her hands together. An hour or so I would think. Naruto said with a smile. See you then Naruto. Ino chirped with a small wave. Yeah see you then. Naruto exclaimed as he walked away. Seven o'clock outside of the Hokage Tower. All of the clones and Naruto appeared at the same time at the very second it hit. Then in an orderly fashion the clones handed in the forms one at a time until all 75 forms were in his hands. Good work I expected nothing less from, well me. He declared with a smug smirk. That's because we're the best believe it. A clone said with a thump up. Dame right we are. Another said. True. Very true. Another said with a nod. Okay this is getting weird. Naruto said as all the clones went up in smoke. Walking into the mission hall Naruto entered with swagger and right up to Aruka as the Hokage had other business to take care of. Too many mission at once Naruto. He asked with a small smile thinking Naruto was here to turn in the ones he couldn't get to. No I'm here to turn in the entire set of completed missions. He said making every person other than him a god smack looked for the second time that day. Looking over the list Aruka saw each one is signed with happy responses. Well okay then Naruto if you would please wait so we can tally the total of your missions. Naruto just nodded and found a chair and sat down. Minus 45 minutes later. Okay Naruto take this to the clerk outside and she'll transfer your pay to your account. Aruka said with a proud smile. Hey maybe you could treat me to ramen this time hum. I love to sansei but I can't tonight maybe tomorrow. Sure and then you can tell me how you managed to do all of those missions at once. Sounds like a plane. How about launch at noon? Getting a nod from his brother figure Naruto walks out of the room. How long do you think it will be until he finds out how much he's getting paid Aruka? A random man asked. Aruka held up three fingers slowly pulled one and going from three, two, one. Holy hell, that's a lot of zeros. He yelled right on time. Every in the hall started laughing their asses off at the blonde ninja. Minus 25 minutes later. After putting on new cloths Naruto headed to the Yumenka flower shop, home for the dinner he agreed to. He still could figure out why he said yes but it was too late to say no now. Knocking on the door Naruto stood in a simply black shirt and pants. He sat there playing with one of his bangs until the door opened to show the blonde matriarch in the same outfit as earlier. Welcome Naruto how are you? Said the beautiful woman. Thank you for inviting me, and I'm doing well. He said in a happy tone and his smile proved it. Stepping aside to allow the young man inside she asked. Why do you feel about pot roast? 
I like it, he said as she closed the door and started to walk to the kitchen with him close behind. Oh that's good I was worried that you wouldn't like it, she said with a sigh of relief. Naruto simply smiled, you don't have to worry about me I'm just happy to not have to cook. Oh you cook, Ino asked as her mother and Naruto walked into the room. Ino's father looked right at Naruto and eyed him closely as his served dinner his wife made. The look said, do anything to my daughter and I'll hurt you. A little, to be honest I'm not the best but I'm not the worst either. Well your mother must be proud, you can cook, you're a polite young man, and a strong ninja to be on your own. Said the mother of Ino as she sat down. I hope so but I wouldn't know. What do you mean Naruto? Ino asked with a raised eyebrow. My parents died the day I was born. I don't even have a clue as to who they were or if they loved me. I was on my own until my eighth birthday when my adoptive father found me. Naruto said with a small sad smile. That made everyone look a little sad at the blonde. I'm sorry I didn't, Ino started to say but was interrupted by Naruto. It's okay you didn't know. Naruto offered a kind smile. Come on let's eat. Naruto cheerfully dug in but at dignified pace. Everyone smiled at his upbeat attitude. Yes let's eat we don't want this food to go to waste now do we? The older blonde man said as his started eat. Over dinner the four shared stories, some about missions, some about friends or their childhood. Not Naruto. But to Ino's horror her mother told every story she could about Ino that should not be told to a boy. Overall Naruto had a lovely dinner with them. Man that was a good dinner thank you for the meal. Naruto said as he headed to the door with the family of blondes close behind. You're welcome please come again sometime we would love to have you over. The blonde father said shocking the two females there. Well do thanks again. Good night. Naruto said as he disappeared into the night with the family say good night back. I'm surprised honey I never thought you would say that to any male around Eno's age at any point. Hey dad are you okay? What the boy grows on you? The man said in his defense making two women smile at him. Out in the forest close to midnight, four days away from Konoha sat a large camp of fifteen tents of different sizes and varying shapes were scattered around and surrounded by a wall of sharpened logs. In the middle of the camp was the largest tent out of all of them by far being held up by long sticks and metal poles. Several bonfires were going though out the camp as the source of heat for the people there. The people looked rough with scars here and there. Some had tattoos, and some had weird haircuts as others didn't have any hair. Their cloths varied from rags to normal framer wear, some had rusted samurai armor pieces on. Six of this people in pairs moved around the camp checking the security of the camp. But none of them noticed a pair of blue eyes watching them from the leaves in the tree's line not more than twelve feet away. Well that makes twenty-two bandits in all. Hum I could finish this in one, maybe two jutsu but where is the fun in that right? thought the shadowy person, well time to get started then, he chirped inside his head, with unnatural stealth disappeared without making a sound or moving anything, it was as if he wasn't even there, one of the bandits stopped to rest his feet by squatting down making another look back at him, hey what's the matter, one bandit in a blue jacket and brown pants with a mop of black hair asked, just resting my feet they're tired from the long patrol, replied the other bandit, he was wearing a green bandana on his head in a black jacket and pants. I just need a few minutes and I'll be fine. Sounds good I had to take a piss anyways. He said as he walked away. I'll be back in a few. He waved as he went behind some crates. Yeah okay. The man sat down on the ground and sighed in relief. Man that's what the doctor ordered. He said happily. Hey you doing okay over there? Yeah I'm doing fine. He never finished he just went silent. Hey you better not be messing around with me man or I swear I'll kill you. The blue jacket bandit said angrily as he walked back from the crates only to find nothing. Hey where did you go? He said getting louder. He was about to call out louder but a hand shot out of the ground underneath him and grabbed his ankle, dragging him underground before he could scream with the ground closing after his head disappeared. After a few seconds the ground began to crack as a human figure came from the ground. It took shape showing the blonde hair and blue eye of Naruto Uzumaki Uchiha. With a few hand seals a thick fag started to roll over the camp covering it in a thick layer of fog. Slowly Naruto's form disappeared as the fog got thicker. Time to compete my mission. 
Naruto thought as he vanished in the fog. Hey has anyone seen Tinchi or Jogi? Shouted a bandit as he searched for the missing men with the camp. No, how can anyone find jack shit in this fog? Screamed another bandit. As the man walked along he heard a thud sound from behind him. What the hell was that? Walking over to the sound the bandit found the lifeless body of one members of the search party. Wah! The bandit was going to say before a kunai found its way into his throat making him drown in his own blood. Hey did you hear that? Another man nearby said to the group of three behind him at the sound of a body hitting the ground. When he got no response he turned around to find all of the men in a pool of their own red life liquid. W what d did th this? Asked the scared man. I did. That was the last thing the heard before his head was removed from his body. All over the camp they bandits died one by one, after about 70% of them were confirmed dead the remaining ones huddled in front of the main tent. What kind of demon could this to so many of us? Asked a bandit who was freaked out, luckily, for him anyways he wasn't the only one. I don't know but keep your guard up he has to be around here somewhere. The fog started to lift showing a blurred view of the shinobi as he slowly walked towards them. When the fog was completely gone the bandits saw what they thought was just a blonde haired kid covered in blood. Their brains started to contact the pieces between the mass murder of bandits and the so called child. N no w way h he did a all th this. He said in a frightened voice. M my god h he re really i is a a demon. One started screaming as he held up his makeshift spear shakily. From behind the bandits came the sound of slow clapping and fast as the seconds passed with increased chucking until it was full blown laughter. Brilliant, purely brilliant, come from the large tent with small torches giving only enough light to show the man's lower half shadowing his face. For one so young to be able kill so many men and not even flinch is truly something to behold. He said making a grand gesture with his arms. But when he said this it only scared his man more. Please do me the favor of telling me your name child. My name's Naruto Uzumaki, who are you? The blonde asked as he pointed his bloody sword at the man. He chuckled a little bet. They call me Twin Blade. The man got up and walked out of the tent showing his black skin and black beard that went from his ears down to his chin. His upper lip was shaved and had a scar from his lip to his forehead at an angle barely missing his right eye. His hair was black and in a mohawk. He had many piercings in his ears. His eyes were a pale yellow in color. He was wearing red armor that covered his upper chest in an X fashion with red shoulder and arm guards. He had black fingerless studded leather gloves on with metal plates on the back of them. His was also wearing black shinobi pants with the trims tucked and taped into his black boots. On twin blade back were two broad swords with small figure skulls where the blade and hilt meet, that made the swords to look like twins. Naruto raised an eyebrow as he pulled out a bingo book and flip thought the pages. Seeing the blonde Uzumaki does this made Twin Blade smile grow wilder. I thought I heard your name before. Twin Blade a high B rack missing ninja from the village hidden in clouds, Chunin level when you left your village and country. Said to have been a raising swordsman. Naruto said as he put the book away. I'm going to enjoy killing you Twin Blade. The claim only made Twin Blade's excitement climb high at the thought of a fight. Come on then and fight me. I want to feel the rush of fighting a strong opponent in a battle to the death. Without waiting Twin Blade drew his swords and charged at the blonde shinobi with a powerful downward slash at the blonde's head. Naruto jumped to the left causing the sword to slam into the ground. You're not getting away that easily. He exclaimed swinging his twin swords horizontally only to be blocked by Naruto's sword who held it with two hands leaning into the blade to add leverage. In a monotone voice Naruto said. You talk too much. Then Naruto kicked twin blades legs out from underneath him. As the bandit fell Naruto readjusted himself and put his sword above his head to jab it down at his opponent's head. Twin blade rolled to the side with the sword stabbing the ground besides his head. Getting a tight grip on his sword swung it up at the blonde hoping to take out one of his legs. But his hopes were dashed as Naruto in a feat of dexterity moved into handstand perfectly balanced on the handle of his blade that was jammed into the ground. The broad sword barely missing the young Uchiha's leg is pasted a centimeter away from it. Naruto let his body fall backwards and used the momentum to pull his sword out of the ground and swung it at the bandit who was still on the ground. 
Twin Blade brought his sword up to block the deadly blade coming for his head as he swung the other one to disembowel the blog. Naruto jumped back to avoid the blade, giving the bandit enough time to get up on his feet. Hee hee your good kid you almost got me a couple of times there. But what do you say we stop with the foreplay and get to the goods? He said as he slide into a stance with both his swords in front of him in an X pattern. Fine I was getting bored anyways. He said in the same voice with a blank look on his face. The two combatants charged at each other full speed with twin blade slashing his swords at the blonde who block or doge them. It was a deadly dance of blades of swordsmanship. Each time the blades contacted a spark would fly into the air. The bandit smiled like a crazed madman until the blonde throw his sword into the air with a spin. Angered by this thinking Naruto give up swung his blades inward only to have them grabbed and pushed away by the blonde shinobi. In a split second Naruto was now in twin blades face with an elbow into his noise breaking it followed by a back hand knocking his head back. Reaching up Naruto cashed his sword swinging it down cutting into the bandit's shoulder and smashing the shoulder plate apart. The only thing stopping Naruto from cutting it off was twin blades quick reaction bring one of his twin swords up to block the blade from sinking in any deeper. It saved his arm and kept it working but with a lot of pain. He was hunched over holding his bloody arm. The remaining bandits saw their leader in trouble and started to move to help when twin blades seen them. Stay there this is my fight. He yelled shocking them. This is what I have been waiting for my whole life. That got Naruto a tame. To fight such a strong opponent and die by the blade, I wouldn't have it any other way. Standing to his full height and pointed one sword at the blonde. I want to know why you even came here in the first place shinobi of Konoha. That's easy, it was my mission. Naruto brought his sword to his side. You are far more entertaining than my last C rank mission. He sighed. I had to deliver a stupid ladder to a farmer. I'm insulted. Hunting me down has been brought down to a mere C rank. Twin blade said with a throbbing tick mark on his forehead. Well my mission was to destroy the bandit camp no one even knew you were even here. Naruto scratched the back of his head. He had a goofy smile as he felt they weren't fighting right now. Right anyways I'm going to kill you now. Twin blade said brings his arms up with blade of his swords crossing each other. In response the whiskered shinobi turned his body sideways bringing his sword in front of him tilted slightly upward. Taking his emotionless tone of voice Naruto eyes hardened. You can try. Just don't cry when I defeat you. A fury of blades soon clashed against another as sparks flew in the air. Stabbing, slashing, and hacking, twin blade threw everything at the blonde but nothing hit. He seemed to flow around his swords or block them. Twin blade swung his swords downward at Naruto's head for said blonde to block them and lock them in place. The two swordsmen fought in a battle of wills as they pushed against one another fighting for dominance. With a swift motion Naruto broke apart from the battle ducking under the deadly edge of his opponent's sword taking a lock of hair. Not wasting a second Naruto kicked the bandit in the stomach sending him flying into the air. Hitting the ground with a thud twin blade quickly picked himself up in time to get a roundhouse kick to the face sending him flying into a tree busting straight though. Coughing up blood twin blade covered his mouth with his hand dying it red. Dame, I can't keep this up. Between the pain and blood loss I'm about to pass out. Looking up Twin Blade's blurred vision could make out the blonde figure running at him with a shimmer he could only guess was his sword reflating the mooring sun. Raw, he gave a battle cry as he brought up his swords only to feel the cold metal cutting into his already wounded shoulder cutting it off. This is the end, he thought with a smile as his arm flew through the air. His body hit the ground with a thud the smile still on his face. Goodbye Twin Blade rest in peace. Naruto turned around towards the scared bandits. So what's it going to be guys? Surrender or die, he said with an empty voice sending a ghostly chill down the spines of the bandits. Looking at each other the bandits the bandits nodded to each other. One by one they put down their weapons. A few days later at the Hokage Tower, the last of the Uzumaki clan stood in front of the third Hokage with his hands in his pockets. His expression was unable to read to even a seasoned ninja. He just finished his report and was about to leave when shouting from the hallway gained the occupants of the room a tame. The muffled voices made their way through the hall to the door. In the hall, Team 10 made their way down the hall after a mission. Ino, Shikamaru, 
and Choji were walking in a triangle pattern with Ino at the front with the boys to the side. It. Amazingly Ino could still fight with the pineapple-haired youth without missing a beat. Asuma was behind them trying to get rid of the headache he developed from listening to his subordinates. He was around six feet in height and muscular in build. His spiky black hair and goatee worked well with his brown eyes. He wears a dark navy blue pants and shirt that was cover in the standard John and dark green flat jacket. Gauze was on both of his biceps and a pair of knives that looked like a mix between brass knuckles and a trench knife hanging off his belt. The man was smoking a cigarette, it hung loosely from his lips as he walked down the hallway. Shut it, you don't know anything, the loud famine voice of Eno yelled out. Whatever I'm just stating the truth you troublesome blonde, Shikamaru said in a bored voice. Oh yeah if Sasuke isn't the best, then who is, you? Ino's voice grew as she got closer to the door. Hell number, it's too troublesome to be the best. The new genin said with his face taking a frown. Looking back Ino had spiteful look on her face. Then who was Mr. Know-it-all? She said with squinted eyes as she reached for the door handle. Shikamaru looked at her in the eyes with a bored look he always wears. Naruto, was his simple reply, Ino froze in place. She looked away with a small blush that they couldn't see. What did you say? She said quietly getting Shika to raise his eyebrow. What is going on? All the time I have known her I have never heard her this quiet. Hum, he thought with calculating eyes. It's nice that I don't have to listen to her for once. Why is he dragging this out? Eno's plums were getting sweater every second that pasted by. Well what did you say? She said as her face got redder. Well nothing lasts forever. Shikamaru sighed to himself. I said Sasuke isn't the best, Naruto is. Shish shut you up. Ino stuttered as she opened the door with shut eyes. Walking in the room trying to had her blush and ended up running into something solid. Falling on her ass ungracefully Ino rubbed her behind. Hey watch out where you're going. She yelled in anger never looking up. Why does this stuff happen to me? I'm sorry but I think you bumped into me Ino chan Ino I opened wide as fear sat in. Slowly looking up Eno sees the face of the blonde male she has been trying so hard to get out of her head for the past week. Here let me help you. Naruto said with a foxy smile holding out his hand that Eno took. Trying to fight down the blush on her face Eno decided to deflect a tain by asking a question. What are you doing here Naruto? She asked looking away from the blonde hair. Me, not much, just handing in a mission report. Naruto said nonchalantly. Oh really your team must be something, 75d rank in a day is nothing to sniff at. Asuma said as he entered with the boys. The members of his team jaws were on the ground as a winter winds blow past them covering them in snow. Is that true Asuma sensei? A zombie fed Ino asked as she slowly turned her head towards her teacher. Asuma took a step back as a cold sweat ran down his face. Well that's what I heard anyways. Man I never have seen them like this. The god of shinobi chuckled as he smoked his pipe shuffling through the paperwork on his desk. I'm pleased to tell you that rumor is true. I know because I personally handed the missions to Team Zero. Not only that but every one of them had a happy report from the clients. Shikamaru was the first to break out of his zombie state. Wait does that mean Naruto got new teammates? That got Asuma to raise an eyebrow. No the team remains the same as the day you graduated from the academe. The third said not looking up from his paperwork. B but th that means na Naruto completed those entire missions himself. Ino said in a state of shock. Assume a cigarette fall onto the floor as he did his best impression of a fish. What? You mean team zero is just one person? Asuma yelled loudly in surprise. Rubbing his ears in pain the old cage nodded. Yes that's correct Asuma. Ignoring his son stuttering the third went about his business. Anyways we're done here Naruto you can go now. And take your friends with you I'm sure Asuma and I can take it from here. Naruto nodded and led all the other teens out of the office shutting the door behind them. Dad what the hell wrong with you? Asuma shouted as he slammed a fist down on the desk. Just because he's a Jinchuriki doesn't mean he can take on the world alone. Hitting the desk again he continued. If he goes on anything higher than AD rank mission he'll die. How can you let the village Jinchuriki go off without protection? Don't you care about him at all? The third Hokage's face grew dark and angered. Asuma shut the hell up. 
The Hokage punched Asuma in the face faster than one would think he could move. Asuma flew across the room and hit the wall causing spider web creaks. How dare you clam that I don't care when you only see him as a weapon. Naruto is a young man, and is so skilled that if he didn't request to be put into the academy I would have made him a Jonin or Anbu the moment he entered my office. You're the one who doesn't care about him Asuma. You don't see him for who he truly is. He is Naruto Uzumaki of the village hidden in the leaves. Asuma sat on the ground in shock that his father punched him in the way he did. Sure they spared once in a while as family time but that was in anger. Setting back behind his desk fixed the paperwork. In a much calmer tone the third spoke. Asuma you don't know the first thing about Naruto so don't pretend to. His right I was just thinking about a weapon and not the person he is, and I don't know anything about him. Putting his head in his hand in shame Asuma felt so stupid. How could I be such a fool? Looking at his father Asuma felt he had to apologies. I'm sorry father, you're right I don't know anything about him. You don't have to apologies to me Asuma. It's Naruto who you have to get forgiveness from. The old cage said with a small smile. I hear his looking for someone to teach him about wind charka, which may be a good place to start Asuma. Asuma got to his feet and took a deep bow to his father Hokage. Thank you I'll do just that. With that Asuma left to find the group of Genin. Asuma my son your heart is in the right place, just a little misguided is all. Sarutobi said with a small chuckle. And good luck keeping up with his training you may run out of things to teach him before you know it. With Naruto and the others. Naruto and the others were setting at restaurant that Choji picked out. So the BBQ restaurant that team Asuma often went to after training or a mission. Shikamaru and Choji sat on one side leaving Naruto and Ino on the other much to her embarrassment. Her embarrassment came from the fact that she was trapped next to the wall that their sat was attached to with Naruto was close that leaning a little bet she could him. The boys have been talking for past few minutes and Ino been quite something that didn't escape the notice of the other occupants. Hey Ino chan are you okay? Asked Naruto with a concerned look on his face making him look cuter to Ino, whose blush took over her face. I I'm fine, she said meekly. What's wrong with me? Why is my heart beating so fast? It feels like it's going to explode. Naruto put his hand to her forehead making go stiff as a board. Her body started to feel hotter as a fuzz feeling filled the pit of her stomach. Hum you don't seem to have a fever Ino-chan. Are you sure you're okay? Pushing his hand off her forehead Ino nodded as fast her head allowed. Why is this happening to me? Naruto leaned in closer to the blonde female. Their faces just inches apart causing Ino's whole body to feel like it was on fire. Are you sure Ino-chan? Naruto asked clueless to what he was doing. Please someone save me, Ino thought as she tried to fight off the weird feeling swarming around inside her. As if to save the day Asuma chose this moment to appear. Hey guys what's up, he said with a smile on his face and waving at his genin. Naruto sat straight up to greet the teacher much to Ino's relief. Well I thought it would be a good idea to have some training today. Ino just nodded with a smile but she was cheering on the inside. Yes now I can forget about that weird stuff. Hey Naruto I hear you're looking for someone to teach you how to use wind nature. How about you join us and I'll teach you a thing or two. Really? Well that sound great thank you. A goofy smile was plastered on the blonde ninja's face. Ino was pulling out her hair and crying in her corner. Why do you do this to me Asuma sensei? All right I'll pay for this and we can get going. Asuma said as he started to pull out his wallet. There's no need Asuma sensei Naruto already covered it. Choji said as he started to pack the rest of the food. Asuma blinked a couple of times and looked at Naruto. Um how did you pay for it all? A blush spread across Naruto's face as he rubbed the back of his head. Well I had a lot of cash from the missions and had nothing to spend it on. So I treated my old friends to launch. Asuma smirked at the blonde. I like you already kid. Ino couldn't believe her luck. First Naruto was in the Hokage office, then Shikamaru and Choji dragged me to launch with the guy. And to top it off Asuma now wants to teach him jutsu. Man why does God do this to me? Come on team we got a lot of work ahead of us. Asuma said as he exited the restraint. I blame you for this. Shikamaru said looking like he just woke up. Shut up you lazy bum. 
If you got more exercise you'll have more energy. Naruto said bumping into him. You know Naruto you're right. I should exercise less so I have a real excuse not to do anything. He said in a smug voice. Well that's one way to go about it. Naruto said sweat dropping as the genin left out the door. Sasuke Uchiha walked into the compound after a day of training with his team and was on his way for further training. Sasuke liked his team as far as they went he knew it could be worse, having a pink-haired girl named Sakura was a fangirl and one was bad enough he would lose his mind if they were too. His other teammate Sai was fairly quit but when he did speak it was usually to insult someone or question their sexuality, however was very skilled so he didn't hold him back any. His sensei Kakashi was strong but lazy so he really didn't have a good or bad opinion about him yet, but he was teaching them so things so that gave him a couple of points in his book. Sasuke was wearing his blue long collar t-shirt with the Uchiha clan symbol on his back and white shorts alone with his blue sandals. Walking up to a large house Sasuke takes a deep breath as he opens up the door of his home. Traveling farther into the house he hears the sounds of soft humming coming from the kitchen without thinking his feet guided him towards the soft music. Stopping at the doorway Sasuke stops to see his mother in the kitchen cooking lunch probably for him and Itachi after their days of training and work as head of the clan respectfully. A soft smile spread across his face as he looked one of his last family members. I'm home mother, he said softly but happily. Turning around Makoto saw her son standing in the doorway. Welcome home son lunch will be ready in a few minutes. Where's brother at? I wanted to ask him to train me today. The young raven-haired Uchiha asked. He is in his study doing paperwork. She said going back to cooking the food. Your brother has been doing very well for the past few years as head of the clan. Thanks mom, Sasuke said as he walked through the hall to Itachi's study. The halls were filled with pictures of the family and friends. Sasuke's life hung up on the walls from him being a baby with Itachi holding him to his must resent of him graduating from the academy and the party of him, his mother, and his brother Itachi, and the last of the Uchiha, excluding Naruto, having a homemade barbecue thanks to Itachi who cooked. Getting to the oak door he stopped just in front of the door and knocked sternly. After get a come in from the dull tone of his brother's voice Sasuke entered to see Itachi writing down information into scrolls. Looking up Itachi peered into the eyes of his little brother and gained a smile few get to see. Hello foolish little brother. Getting a tick mark on his forehead Sasuke's eyes seemed to go completely white. Are you ever going to stop calling me that? He shouted in frustration. No, was Itachi's simple response making Sasuke hump and turn to the side. Itachi chuckled at his brother's childlike attitude. What can I do for you today Sasuke? Snapping out of his act Sasuke faced his brother. Well I wanted you to train me today so I could get stronger. Itachi's smile disappeared and a small frown took its place. I'm sorry Sasuke I can't today. Sasuke's face married his own. I have a meeting today so I can't train you. I understand big brother. The Uchiha said felling a little sad. Getting an idea Itachi pulled out a scroll from his desk and set on top of his writing space. Here Sasuke since I can't train you I'll give you this scroll to learn from. It has some chakra control exercises and fire jutsu and should keep you plenty busy and when I return I'll help you from where you're at. Gladly taking the scroll Sasuke scanned the content and smirked. This well differently put me above the blonde dope. Rolling up the scroll Sasuke smiled at his brother and gave a small bow. Thank you brother. Then he left to train out in the courtyard of the compound. Sasuke I know who you want to surpass but I don't think you know just how much a task that really is. After all he surpassed me long ago and is still growing, so you well have a lot of cashing up to do my foolish little brother. Itachi thought with a smile. With Naruto. Naruto was standing at the edge of a field with his hands clasped together and consternating on whatever it was he was doing. Ino, Shikamaru and Choji were working on their teamwork by fighting Asuma and trapping him but it was far easier said than done for the genin. The three ninja in training was scuffed up with dirt and cuts all over their body but had Asuma surrounded and in a pinch after what seemed like forever and was closing in fast thanks to the brilliant mind of the lazy genus. Human Boulder Jutsu The cubby Akamichi cried as his arms and legs tucked into his inflated body and spun around at fast speeds as he charged at his teacher with the intent to flatten him. Asuma jumped over the rolling genin with ease but had to jump to the side to doge the kunai that Ino threw. 
Nice try but you'll have to do better than that. Choji turned around for a seconded round and not wanting to take on a tank of meat the breaded Jonan was forced on the run. Dogging the cubby boy again he ducked under shrunken throne by the pineapple-haired genus failing to notice the shadow slowly growing on his back. His danger sense kicked in telling him to get the hell out of Doge and he obeyed by jumping to the left like an animal would just in time as Eno hit the ground where he was a seconded ago Kanai in hand stabbing it into the ground where his head was. Getting up Asuma tried to move but his body suddenly stopped moving. What the? Shadow possession jutsu, complete. Shikamaru said with a smug smirk and released the jutsu as the exercise is now over. The Jonin smiled at his team impressed with their progress. Good work you guys you're all getting better and your teamwork was flawless. He said as he starched his macules. Looking over towards the blonde student has picked up to see him with hands together. Hey Naruto how far are you along with the technique? Naruto turned his head and smiled his goofy, fox-like smile. That good uh? Well come over here and let's see it. The blonde shinobi nodded his head as he picked some leaves from the tree above his head. Hum Asuma sensei what is Naruto doing anyways? The curious female of team Asuma asked. The teacher looked over at his students as they looked at him with confused eyes. Well Naruto right now is tempting to gain mastery over his wind element by cutting a leaf with just his chakra. Opening a bag of chips as it was a free moment the rounded boy asked his teacher. Hum Asuma sensei how would cutting a leaf help? It doesn't sound ever hard, I mean it sound like something I could do it. He finished as he started to stuff his face with chips. Well I thought the same when I started to train with my wind nature. But just like tree or water walking the concept is far easier to understand than to put into practice. As an example of how hard this really is, I would say trying to do this is kind of like taking your bare finger and try to cut a steel sheet in half in one try. He said getting bugged eyes from the genin under his command as Naruto ran up with a fist full of leaves. The idea behind it is simple really, the ninja would mold his chakra into two blades and grind them together making them as thin and sharp as possible in order to cut the leaf. If one could do this then they could apply it to their jutsu making them stronger and able to cut through anything depending how in tone to the element you were. Hey Asuma sensei I think I have this down. Smiling brightly at the blonde he chuckled at the thought of him getting this down in only a couple of hours when it took even gifted weeks to complete it. Okay let's see what you got and if you did it I'll tell the second step. Getting a nod from the blonde he placed four leaves in the palm of his hand making Asuma raise an eyebrow. After putting his hands even on top of each other he closed his to focus turning his chakra to wind affinity, the three genin leaned in to see if there was some trick to what his was doing. What is he doing? One alone he hard enough but he just put four down there's no way he can do this, to do so would take unbelievable amount of focus and control along with a natural talent that would put genus of the likes of Itachi to shame. Naruto opened his eyes and removed his upper hand showing leafs with a smirk on his face. The Jonin looked at leafs with a sweat drop. It doesn't look like he even touched them. Naruto brought his flat palm to his face in blue causing the leaves to fly off as they split apart straight down the middle causing Asuma to freeze in place as he watched them fly away. Ino looked on in amazement with a light pink dusting her cheeks. Wow, Naruto how are you able to do these things? She thought as her body started to heat up. Naruto just how strong are you going to get? Every time I think I can see the end of your potential I then see a whole new level that even deeper than before. The lazy genus thought with a cold sweat tricking down his face. Please Kami don't let us ever be on opposite side of battle. Choji just stared on blankly as he dropped the bag of chips in shock. Naruto flashed them his fox-like smile, right then the few clouds that was in the sky moved out of the sun's way letting the light shine through lighten up his golden hair. What's next? Asuma broke out of his trance. Right sorry the next step is hard but we can't do right now because we need a waterfall. Reaching into his pouch Asuma pulled out a scroll. I don't know of any so here's a scroll in case you find one. He said as he tossed it at the blonde who caught it with ease. Thanks Asuma sensei. You're welcome. When you get that part mastered come find me and I'll show you some useful jutsu. Anyways that's it for today so you're free to go Naruto. Team stay behind there's something I want to talk to you about. Naruto nodded and said his goodbyes to his friends in the left. Okay team I wanted to say good work on your teamwork and that I'm impressed, 
So much so I think I'll give you guys a couple days to relax but after that we'll do a C rank mission. I don't know how but this is somehow your fault Naruto. The Nara hair thought with a twitching eyebrow. The next day with at the Hokage Tower. Team 7 made their way through the Hokage Tower at noon after morning training on their way to the mission hall with Kakashi behind his genin reading his smut. Sasuke, Sakura, and Sai walked side by side down the hall with Sakura try to get the Uchiha to agree to a date with Sasuke shooting her in every time, and every time he did Sai commented about Sasuke either being gay or asked if he had a small and was scared to let others know. Of course this pissed off both the Uchiha and his fangirl. The team walked into the with Sai sporting new bumps thanks to the wreath of a pink-haired Kunoichi and that pleased Sasuke judging by the smirk on his face. Their Jonin instructor shook his head in amusement and followed his team through the door to the mission hall. Team 7, reporting in for a mission, Kakashi said without ever removing his face from his book. The third Hokage looked up from desk and nodded towards and picked up a list of D-rank missions. Okay let's see what we have. We have walking dogs for the Inazukas, painting a soon-to-be restaurant, weeding a garden for an elderly woman, catching the Domino's wife's pet cat Tora. Every shinobi in the room shuddered at the thought of the cat that has become known as a demon in feline form. Hokage-sama enough with this BS mission we want something worthy of our skill. Sasuke yelled getting nods from his teammates as they too were tiered of the lame missions. Uruka shot up from his set slamming his hands down onto the table. Show some respect you brat you're just genin, the lowest level of ninja and so you get missions as such. Uruka thing went into teacher mode and went on a boring speech about ninja and how the missions are sorted out based on rank. Looking back at the genin he saw them lessening to a story on how Sakura compared different types of hair products had the best effect and in combination, the real icing on the cake was that even the third was over near the genin lesson as well. Hokage-sama what are you doing? Everyone in the group looked back at the chunin with wide eyes because they forgot where it is they were. Hum, getting hair advice for my grandson. The old cage said in a questioning tone. Appearing back near his set the god of shinobi coughed into his hand with a small blush on his face. Anyways before you can get a mission you must get approval from your jonin sensei first. So Kakashi do you think your team is ready for a C rank mission? The man in question looked at his team for a min before turning back to his cage and nodded. Yes I think they have the skill and teamwork for a simple C rank mission Hokage-sama. Very well I have just the mission for but first someone must be present for this. Anbu, an Anbu ninja fell from seemly nowhere before the aged cage in a kneeling position, get Naruto Uzumaki and bring him here, tell him it an emergence. The Anbu nodded before disappeared for the assigned task. After a minutes the Anbu appeared in the room with the blonde, who was dressed in black Anbu sandals and pants but with no top and soaking wet showing off his muscular body and seal that looked like a tattoo which was on his abdomen making every woman in the room blush. This counts Sakura, and the two female Anbu in the room. Sai notices Sakura's blush as her whole body becomes stiff with blood slowly tricking out of her noise as thought about the man in front of her. What's the matter old man? Naruto asked in full battle mode only to find the area void of danger. Well Naruto team 7 is going out on a C rank mission and I think this is the perfect time for you to get some much needed experience. The Hokage said signaling that there was much more going on than there appeared to be. Reaching into his bag Sai pulls out a book and flipped through the pages until he found the page he was looking for. Sakura my book say that when a female is blushing and blood leaking from her noise that most likely means that she is expressing an intense desire to mate with said object she looked at when the symptoms started. He said as his read the book. Also it says that when numerous female express the same thing towards a man it means that there's a chance that he has a large male reproductive organ. Everyone in the room get unbelievable quite as a weird crow and stupid looking started to crow just outside the window. Sai not noticing the tension thought everyone was waiting for an answer to the question as he has read in another book. So not wanting to upset his teammates Sai walked over to the shell-shocked blonde whose mind stopped working and pulled down his pants in one swift movement and let it drop to his ankles. Naruto turned to stone as his manhood stood out for all to see making every woman in room blast back the noise bleed at seeing Naruto seven inches limp hanging out. Several minutes later and one bloody Sai. Fixing his pants Naruto had his eyes closed with a deep blush on his face. 
Anyways who was that emergence? Well I wanted to get you here as soon as possible but it's now apparent I had made an error in judgment. In any case Naruto go get your things because I don't want to see my grandson's junk again. The agent of Cage said getting nods from the other males in the room expect Sai who didn't understand what he did. After a few moments Naruto walked through the door in his full gear and even had his sword out and hooked into place on the blonde's back. His midnight back coat opened showing his fishnet steel shirt with nothing over top of it exposing his chest to the world. Overall he gave the mix of a killer shinobi and sex appeal. Okay now what the mission Oji san? Naruto said in a monotone voice making Sasuke look at the blonde in surprise. He sounded just like Itachi. But how is that possible? Could it be a coincidence or is he really? The grandfatherly Hokage broke Sasuke out of thoughts. Yes your mission is to escort a master bridge builder to his home country of Wave and protect him from bandits and highwaymen until its completion. Please bring in the client now. Soon the door opened to show a man in his late forties with grey hair and goatee, he was around the same height as Kakashi with a whiskey bottle in hand as he leaned on the door frame. The man had glasses that hung down on his noise and wore a brown sleeveless vest with tan shorts that went past his knees and a pair of sandals that were meant to be walked on for many hour out of the day. I am Tazuna and you expect me to believe these brats are the ninja I hired to protect me. Most of them look like they wouldn't be able to protect themselves let alone me. Taking a gulp of the bottle he sighed in satisfaction. The only one out of this lot that looks like his worth anything is the kid in black with the sword and he looks like he would rather my daughter than protect us if the time came. He stated with dissatisfaction. Sai simply gave a small fake smile before he responded. Well from what I read Naruto-san would have the necessary amount to please about any woman, and if that wasn't enough then his stamina would surely do the job as he is able to outrun all of the Jonin within Konoha for days at a time. Everyone just ignored the pale boy and went on with the conversation. Well my team may not like much but each one has the strength to protect to you. Even if they can't I'm a Jonin of the highest skill and then there the blonde here is back up and is skilled enough to this kind of mission on his own so you'll be pliantly safe. Kakashi said trying to reinsure the man but questing his own statement about Naruto's skills having not seen them himself. But if the third thought he was strong enough to be in a team by himself then he would trust his cage. Okay so we'll meet in front of the gates tomorrow at 9 o'clock have your stuff packet and ready to go. Getting a nod from everyone they left expect Naruto as the old Hokage wished to talk with him farther. The next day. Naruto arrived at the specified location on time to see the members of Team 7 arrive without their sensei and their client waiting half asleep. After 10 or so minutes Kakashi appeared in a plume of smoke and gave a weak wave. Yo, he said getting a shout of, you're late, from the pink-haired Kunoichi. Well you see a black cat crossed my path, he saw they weren't buying it so he settled for coughing in his hands. Anyways let's get on with the mission. Naruto I know you have got used to working on your own but you're on a team now, and I'm in charge as your commanding officer for the duration of this mission do you understand? He asked in a serious tone here only a few times from his genin team. Yes Kakashi and just so you know I have worked in teams before so don't worry about me being unable to corporate. Good now let's go team. The sliver haired Jonin said as he started to walk with the client close behind. A little time later. The team walked down the dirt road from Konoha to Wave Country with Sakura asking Tazuna about the country's history and what it was like there. Kakashi stepped in to talk about how Wave doesn't have ninja and the element country's hidden villages worked and the various cage that ruled over them. Sasuke lessened in hoping to hear about some powerful shinobi and Sai pertained to out of curiosity, or so he read. They learned that Wave was a small country of islands that largely depended on fishing and their carpenters for business. As they walked down the path Naruto saw a puddle on the edge of the road. Eyeing it for only a second Naruto put his hands in his coat pockets in a causally manner. The puddles rise up and took the shape of two human figures wearing identical outfits. They wore grey and white cameo jumpsuits with rain coats over them and breathers over their mouths used for underwater. One man had spiky black hair and a forehead protector that had two horns on it to help him look more intimidating. The other ninja also had black hair but was combed down with his forehead proctor having a horn going straight up the middle of his head where his hair parted. Both had a clawed gauntlet on opposite arms, one per person, that had a chain of shrunken's contacting them. 
Let's kill them brother. They rushed forward at the unexpected group of ninjas wrapping the Jonin up in their chains tightly preventing escape as the sharp edge dug into Kakashi's flesh. One down, said the spiky haired brother. They gave a swift pull with their gauntlets ripping the man to shreds making the team seven freeze in place. As they went to move they felt another pull on their chain causing them to stop and look back, seeing the blonde sword stuck through holes of the chain where the line would converge stopping them from moving as it was pegged to the ground. The blonde himself was standing on the hilt of it, Naruto quickly spun around throwing two kanais at the base of their spine forcing them to detach chain or be crippled for the rest of their, no doubt, short lives. Making a quick dash one of shinobi went towards the old drunk as the other one went for the black haired Uchiha. Sakura in amazing amount of braveness stepped in front of Tazuna who was terrified with kanai in hand to protect him. Naruto reached down and guard hold of his sword's hilt and seemed to vanish and reappear in front of Sakura to stab the spiky hair shinobi in the knee forcing him to the ground in a sudden halt. In movement faster than anyone besides Kakashi could see Naruto threw a couple more kanais at the other brother's feet with enough force to sink halfway. This caused him a moment pause of pain allowing Sasuke to punch him in his face before grabbing the front of his raincoat to use the momentum to jump up and knee him in his stomach making him lose the air in his lung. Quickly Sai brought out ninja wire and restrained the two ninja. Appearing out of thin air Kakashi stood in front of his team. Good work team impressive work. Sakura face lit up with untold happiness that her sensei wasn't killed. Kakashi sensei you're alive. Oh come on now you didn't really think I would go down that easily did you? He asked with an eye smile. In any case Sakura you did well jumping in front of Tazuna to save him, you showed impressive courage and I'm proud of you. That got a happy blush from the girl. Sasuke good work on hitting the enemy hard so he'll stay down and Sai you did well restraining them so quickly, every smooth work guys. Sasuke gave a Y smirk and Sai looked the same as always with his fake smile. And we can't forget the bread and butter of this fiasco Naruto, who was able to disable two Chunin veterans in a matter of moments. You showed amazing skill and executed them perfectly, Kakashi said as he gazed at the blonde. He is strong, too strong to be a genin even if he's on his own. Besides I could see it in his eyes, the claim, the claim that only comes from being in life and death battles countless times. He didn't flinch or hesitate, like he knew the outcome of the battle before it even began. Naruto rubbed the back of his head bashfully. Oh thanks, but I really didn't do much. Sakura couldn't believe what she was hearing. He single-handedly gave us victory and he acting like he just sat there and did nothing. Everyone I have ever met would have boosted about it, but not Naruto is too humble for such things. Sakura thought as a small blush worked its way to her face in admiration of the blonde shinobi. Tazuna looked a little freaked out. He was so fast I couldn't even see him, but with him guarding me I won't have much to worry about him, so far. Naruto looked over at the chunin that was tied to a nearby tree. Looks like you were right Oji-san. Flashback. Naruto just walked into the Hokage's office with the third and shut the door behind him. With a couple of hand signs a faint blue overtook the office keeping those from outside the room from hearing inside. Turning around Serutobi walked to his desk and sat down. Naruto I suspect that the mission that you're going on is far more dangerous than it appears. Naruto's face looked like it was made from stone as he didn't react. You think Tazuna lied? Nodding slowly his old face was completely serious. Yes I do, but I think he did it out of fear. That's why I'm sending you on this mission Naruto, you'll be able to protect him and Kakashi's team. Do not be mistaking Naruto this is undercover mission to weed out what has Tazuna so scared and cut the beast's head off. Naruto nodded respectfully. Here take this in case Kakashi ends the mission. He handed Naruto a scroll, taking a quick scan his eyes widen. End flashback. These are Karigakar Chunin, they're famous for their wellness to fight to complete a mission until death. Not only that they were waiting and watching for us. The sun was out and it's been days since it last rained so there was no way for there to be a puddle so it was obvious a genjutsu. Naruto here picked up on it right away but didn't act because like me he wanted to find something out. Spoke the jonin in a lecturing tone as the bridge builder started to sweat. What would that be? He said worriedly. What they were really after. Were they after us, ninja attacking ninja? But they weren't they were after you the bridge builder. 
In any case it's clear that this is more than a mere C rank mission, if so protecting you until the bridge would be a simple thing. But if you're expecting to be target of a ninja assault then it is beyond question that this would be ranked higher for elite ninja. This is far beyond the scope of the mission. My question is why did you lie? Tazuna teeth clinched in frustration and tightened his fist until his knuckles turned white. With a deep sigh he unclenched his hands knowing that if he wanted help he would have to tell the truth. There's a real scary man out for my life. Kakashi eyed him letting him know to continue. You have probably heard of him. He's a billionaire in the field of marine transportation, his name is Gato. Kakashi's eye widens. You mean Gato of shipping and transport? They say his is the richest man in the world. The old man nods. That's the one, on the surface he looks like a legitimate businessman. But in truth his is a murdering criminal who employs gangs and bandits to do his dirty work, and traffics in drugs and contraband including humans. Sakura paled at the thought knowing he meant sex slaves. It was a year ago that he showed up under the banner of good business but he soon overtook all of Wave's shipping industries. Then he started using violence to keep us under his thumb. After all the man who rules the sea rules the country. And the only thing he fears is the completion of the bridge, for with its completion his hold over the land will be broken. So being the architect and overseer of the bridge construction you are much in his way Mr. Tazuna. Sakura said as she rubbed her chin in thought. Why didn't you just say you needed help? My country is very poor our lords are poor. And I have no money at all, an elite B rank was more than I could afford. Adopting a seldom look Tazuna gave off a depressing air about him. Naruto's blue eyes soften in sympathy for the bridge builder and his people. Walking over to the man he placed a hand on his shoulder sportively. Don't worry I'll help you and your country. Naruto that's not really your call, but what do the rest of you think? Asked Kakashi with a half-lidded eye. Sasuke was the first to respond. I say we go we can handle it. Sai just nodded. Yeah with us acting as a team nothing can stop us. Sakura exclaimed happily and full of confidence. Somewhere deep in the woods of Wave, a building that looked like some kind of insect hive with three openings sat, two were rope bridges and the last was a spiral staircase leading up from the ground floor. Wooden planks covered it as it hung onto a tree. Failed. What the hell do you mean you failed? A four-foot man screamed. He wore a black business suit and tie with darkened sunglasses, his spiky graying hair was up with it flatting downwards. If you weren't the best I wouldn't be paying top dollar. But all his yelling got him was a large sword to his throat. Shut up you ungrateful runt, said a chillingly clam voice that sounded like death. Following the sword you saw it was six feet in length and a foot wide. A small opening the size of a hand near the top and a crescent moon shape was built into the cutting edge of the blade making a pocket big enough of a person's head. Holding onto the two foot handle was a six feet two inches man with short and shaggy brown hair. He had no shirt but a brown lather sword holder, he wears a white and dark grey cameo arm and leg wormers. The demon brothers failed Gato. I will now take care of this myself. Taking a gulp the midget of a man knew one wrong move would mean his life. Yes sir but are you really sure you want to? The enemy has haired has hired ninja of tremendous skill, besides after the last attempt they will be on guard now. The sword wielded ninja's face scrunched up in contempt. Just who do you think you're talking to? I am Zabuza Momochi, the demon hidden in the mist. And none shall escape my blade. Failed. What the hell do you mean you failed? A four-foot man screamed. He wore a black business suit and tie with darkened sunglasses, his spiky graying hair was up with it flatting downwards. If you weren't the best I wouldn't be paying top dollar. But all his yelling got him was a large sword to his throat. Shut up you ungrateful runt said a chillingly clam voice that sounded like death. Following the sword you saw it was six feet in length and a foot wide. A small opening the size of a hand near the top and a crescent moon shape was built into the cutting edge of the blade making a pocket big enough of a person's head. Holding onto the two foot handle was a six feet two inches man with short and shaggy brown hair. He had no shirt but a brown lather sword holder, he wears a white and dark grey cameo arm and leg wormers. The demon brothers failed Gato. I will now take care of this myself. Taking a gulp the midget of a man knew one wrong move would mean his life. Yes sir but are you really sure you want to? The enemy has haired has hired ninja of tremendous skill, besides after the last attempt they will be on guard now. 
The sword wielded ninja's face scrunched up in contempt. Just who do you think you're talking to? I am Zabuza Momochi, the demon hidden in the mist. And none shall escape my blade. And now, we find our heroes in a small fishing boat going across the large body of water at the crake of dawn under the cover of the thick morning fog. The team of ninja had been talking about Tazuna's bridge to pass the time but did so quietly with the genin of Team 7 being absent mind of their surrounding but Naruto was alert as ever. Kakashi's lone eye unnoticeably pecked over the orange adult novel he was reading to glance at Naruto who was reading a book about the theory of advanced sealing in a similar manner as himself. Hum sealing is one of the hardest skills to master, it takes years of practice to master even the basics of the art. Yet here he is reading advanced level stuff. Maybe I'm overthinking it, after all reading about ninjutsu and such could just be a hobby of his. With that thought he buried his face back into his smut. Sakura looked over at the two deadly ninja reading their respective books and sweat dropped. She leaned in closer to her teammates to whisper. Hey, have you guys notice how similar Naruto and Kakashi sensei are? Sasuke opened his eye and glanced at the pink haired Kunoichi and then at the two reading ninja. They like to read I don't see what the big deal is. Sasuke said in an equally quick tone. No she write less Naruto and Kakashi sensei share a lot of similar traits outside of reading. Sai commented. Like what you pale dope. The young Uchiha said with a tick mark on top of his head. Sai made no visible reaction to Sasuke name calling and went on. Well for one both of them are acting like they're in a tea house instead of on a high risk mission. Another is that Naruto has almost identical body long to Kakashi. Sasuke humped. So what they're both trained as ninja by the same village they're bound to have identical body long. Soccer aside, he has a point sigh maybe I'm just imaging things. A grin scratched across his face and descended to mess with his fellow genin. Bringing the book down to the bridge of his noise Naruto gave an eye smile at whispering genin. You know we can hear you right. The trio heads turned so fast that it looked like they would have whiplash and widened eyes. A ghostly masked face of their teacher seemed to overlap Naruto as he looked just like him with the eye smile. Sakura slowly turned her head around with Sasuke and Sai doing the same. Okay maybe there's something to it after all, she said as if she seen the devil and getting a nod out of her teammates. Kakashi and Tazuna were laughing lightly at the young ninja antics. Several minutes later. Kakashi and team were walking down a dirt road as they surrounded Tazuna and on higher alert than before. Naruto looked side to side as they made their way to Tazuna's house with a foreboding feeling in the pit of his stomach. The blonde's eyes darted to some bushes and watched them move for a split second. Naruto turned his head as if he saw nothing but inwardly smirked about the sure to be incoming fight. A swishing sound filled the air and was getting louder quickly. Get down. Kakashi screamed as he tackled Sasuke and sighed to the ground with Naruto getting Sakura and the old bridge builder down and out of the way. The massive sword of Zabuza stuck into the tree not too far from where Team 7 took a dive. The figure of the swordsman stood on top of the sword's handle as the team and Tazuna got back up onto their feet. Well it's no wonder why the demon brothers failed, with a shinobi leader as the infamy's ninja Kakashi Hitaki. The man somehow said with bandages around his as he stood with his back turned to people on the ground. Kakashi is the only one out of the group who looks like he could put up a challenge. His eye drifted over to the group until his eye landed on Naruto. Hum he looks familiar, but where have I seen him before? Now's my chance to show that blonde dope who's the best and I'm not going to miss it. Sasuke thought as he started going for his kunai pouch. Well if it isn't Zabuza Momochi the kid who ran off from Karigakur and became a missing ninja. Sasuke started to run at the dangerous ninja but was cut off by Kakashi holding his arm out. Don't interfere and give me room, this one is different from the previous opponents. Reaching up to his headband, this covered his left eye, and grabbed a hold of it of the metal. For an opponent of this caliber I'll need to use this. All of you assume battle positions and protect Mr. Tazuna. He pulled the head band up to revile his red eye of the Sharingan. Ah the Sharingan so quickly in battle, this is an honor. Zabuza said now facing Kakashi. Sakura looked at Kakashi. I have heard about the Sharingan but what does it do? The Sharingan is a visual jutsu that enables the user to penetrate and see the reality behind any genjutsu, taijutsu, or ninjutsu and reflect them back at the one who cast them. And there's more to them. 
Sasuke answered the pink-haired Kunoichi. That's right brat the Sharingan is the most formidable asset also allows the user to discern and the duplicate any jutsu it sees turning the opponent's own jutsu against them. When I was assassin for Kurigakur I possessed a bingo book, a kind of who's who of your greatest enemy list. It had quite the extensive write-up on you including a mention on your impressive record. Kakashi Hataki the man who had seen through and copied over a thousand jutsu nicknamed, Kakashi the copycat ninja. While I didn't know Kakashi sensei was such a big deal, the one female of the group thought in amazement. The demon of the hidden mist crouched down and grabbed a hold of the handle. Enough with the pleasantries, I'm on a tight schedule to kill the old man. The genin got into a proactive circle around Tazuna, but it looks like I'll kill you first Kakashi. With a strong kick Zabuza freed his blade from the trunk of tree and landed on the surface of the water and stood there as if was land with little waves going outward from his feet. One of his hands was in front of his chest and the other was scratched far above his head. Hidden Mist Jutsu. A thick fog quickly overtook the land in making hard to see two feet in front of your face. Everyone stay on your toes I haven't mastered very aspect of the Sharingan yet. There are eight targets. Came Zabaza's disembodied voice from the thick mist as he filled the air with killer intent. Throat, spinal column, lungs, liver, the jugular vein, the subclavian artery, kidney, heart. He said in attempt to scare his opponents and succeeding in scaring the old man and the genin of Team 7 but not Naruto or Kakashi. Sasuke was trembling in fear of the Jonin out for his blood. This blood lust that fills the air, is this really what it's like when two Jonin fight? It's unbearable, I feel like I'm going to choke to death. To know my life is in the hands of my enemy, that even blinking could decide if I live or die. I hate it, I rather kill myself. He thought grabbing a hold of a kunai ready to stab it into his gut and spill it all over the ground. Sasuke, Kakashi yelled out in the mist. Don't worry I'll protect all of you, I won't allow my comrades to die. He said calming the collative group down. I wouldn't bet on that. Zabuza said loudly as he appeared in the middle of Genin forcing them into Zuna to fall to the side in fright. Before he could react Zabuza found a sword piercing his back and through the other side hitting his kidneys. Shock overtook his face as he looked over his shoulder and followed the blade back to its owner to find Naruto looking in the opposite direction into the mist. Zabuza turned into water and splashed on the ground. Kakashi was as shocked as Zabuza at the quick dispatch of the water clone that he didn't notice the missing ninja behind him. You let your guard down, Zabuza said as he swung his clever like sword cutting the Jonin in half. But like Zabuza Kakashi turned into water midair and reappeared behind him with Kanai to his neck. Game over, the Cyclops ninja said, well would you look at that. You were able to copy me in the cover of the mist. But don't you think for a moment that one because it will take more to defeat me than mimicking me like an ape. But you are good, in the time you gave your little speech you duplicated my water clone technique and replaced yourself with it so my attention would be on it, bravo. Another Zabuza phased behind Kakashi. But I'm not that easy to fool. Taking a strong sweep with his bladed Zabuza swung it at Kakashi who ducked under the razor sharp edge making the blade dug into the ground. Zabuza used the momentum to his advantage and kicked the teacher into the air and fly across the field and into the river. The ex mist ninja gave hast after Kakashi but his path was blocked Caltrop's traps but he wasn't detoured and jumped onto the river as Kakashi came up for air. Water style water prison jutsu. A sphere of water trapped him inside. You fall right into my trap. The prison may be made of water but it's stronger than steel. Having you running around is too much trouble. I'll finish you off later I have dealt with your brats. Damn it I knew he was strong but I didn't think he was this strong. Kakashi thought to himself as a water clone of Zabuza raised from river. You brats think having head band makes you a ninja but you're wrong, a true ninja is one who has been between life and death so many times the lines blur. Clothes don't make you a shinobi but skill dedicated to kill your opponents from years of training to be a ninja. When you killed enough people to make a listing in my in my bingo book of enemies then you may call yourself a ninja. So until then, Zabuza vanished and reappeared in front of Sasuke and kicked him the stomach sending him skidding and skipping across the ground. You're nothing but brats. Sasuke. Sakura yelled out as she caught the flying boy. Everyone listen, take Tazuna and go, it's a fight you can't win. 
Well his has me in this water prison he can't leave and his water clone can't go far from his real body. Kakashi screamed. Naruto stood in the back of the group and did a few hand sighs making a soft blue light glow under his jacket before it faded but not before Zabuza and Kakashi caught it. What was that? Naruto what are you planning? The blonde Uchiha stepped forward as he drew sword form his sheath. Sakura can you do me a favor? He asked with an aura that screamed power. Looking at her from the corner of his eye, the kunoichi in question nodded her head. Watch over to Zuna and your teammates while I get your sensei. Not even waiting for a response Naruto blurred from existence as the ground under Naruto kicked up dust. Naruto's image cleared as he slashed down on the clone splitting in half. Zabuza looked Naruto in the eye and what he saw sent a chill down his spine for what he saw was the ice-cold pools that looked like they belonged to the Shinigami himself. As soon as Naruto's feet touched the ground he was off like a rocket towards the mist ninja, in mid swung the blonde's blade meet with Zabuza's and soon became a struggle between strength between the two as Zabuza tried with all his might to keep Kakashi in his prison. Ducking low Naruto kicked his opponent's stomach sending him flying as it ripped his arm out of the jutsu. Zabuza hit the water with a loud smack as he sunk into the water deeps as Naruto throw his sword into the air and run through a long chain of 23 hand sighs in a blink of an eye and slammed them onto the water. Water style 5 hungry sharks. Naruto yelled out push a large an amount of chakra into the water. What's going on? Naruto's chakra was only chunin level a few minutes ago and now it's above my own. Kakashi thought as he dragged himself out of the water. It must have something to do with that blue light I saw. In the river with Zabuza just before Naruto's jutsu. What the hell was that? That Brad just sent me flying like I was nothing. He thought as he started to swim back to the surface. Why do I get this feeling like I have seen him before? Then figures started to form in the water of sharks and soon swam after him it and seemed to fly through water like a bird in the open sky. Zabuza barely had enough time to bring his sword up the block the punishing blow delivered, another came from the side but he was prepared this time and gave a sluggish but powerful swing cutting it in half. Another and then another came, each time one got damage it would heal an attack again and soon the attacks became relentless in their endeavors. They soon broke through his defenses and started to pummel him over and over again with him defending off a few of them at a time. The five sharks came from below Zabuza and slammed into his back rocketing him through the water and out with enough force to send him in the air. Swinging his large sword he used the momentum to correct himself and landed on the water. Despite the beating he just endured Zabuza was pretty much unharmed. Dame I still don't have very good control of that jutsu. Naruto said as he stood up and faced Zabuza who was coughing trying to clear his airway. I have been so preoccupied with the new jutsu I have been trying to learn that I have neglected my other jutsu. Dame you, quit mocking me you little er. Zabuza yelled out a battle cry as he charged while holding his sword to the side, he ran across the surface of the water with rage shown by his veins popping out. He came in with a big slash only for Naruto to parried with a downward strike, they found themselves in a dance of death between two master swordsmen as the sparks flew off the blades as they skated across the water. To Zabuza's irritation he couldn't land a one blow on the elusive blonde but the same could be said for Naruto as Zabuza's superior experience with his sword keep the blonde Uchiha at bay. The clashed blades again and again and each time the water under them blow back by the force of them. He's better with his swordsmanship than imagined, this is going to be harder than I thought. On the shore line, Kakashi was back with his genin and Tazuna and all of them were awe-stricken at the display of Naruto and Zabuza trying to kill each other. This is unbelievable, Naruto is going toe to toe with Zabuza. Sakura and Sasuke were shaking in place at the level of killing intent Naruto was pouring out. His killing intent made Zabuza's early display looks like a child's first attempt by comparison. Kakashi sensei just what is Naruto? The terrified Kunoichi asked feeling like she was going to pee herself and Tazuna already beating her to the punch. But despite the fear she couldn't help but feel warmth come from Naruto like he wouldn't ever hurt his comrades and loved ones. His strong Sakura, far stronger than I ever thought he could be at this point. The two battling shinobi clashed again sending a powerful gust of wind over area. Kakashi watched the whole thing not blinking as he didn't want to miss a thing and recorded it with his Sharingan so it would forever be burned into his memory. Naruto doesn't leave any openings and strikes at the moment Zabuza's does. 
it's only due to Zabaza's experience that saving him from being gutted like a fish. How is he this strong? To fight a Jonin level ninja to a standstill and keep it that way at our age is inconceivable. Were you always this strong Naruto? Sasuke though as he tightened his hand into a fist, digging his nails into his palms until they started to bleed. Have you been toying with me all this time? Sasuke thought back to the academe we ever they faced off he would get a couple of good punches in before he was ultimately defeated. A darkened figure of Naruto towered over Sasuke in his mind making a cold sweat run down his face. How am I supposed to surpass him at this rate? Back with Naruto and Zabuza. Naruto and Zabuza had locked blades and pushed against one another for dominance over the other both gritting their teeth. At the same time both of them kicked each other's side sending them skating across the water as both of them sheathed their swords. Running thought a quick line of hand size Zabuza finished his jutsu. Water style water dragon missile. The water besides Zabuza rose up and formed into a water serpent and gave a screeching sound before barreling after Naruto. Being forced to abandon his jutsu Naruto did three quick hand sighs. Water style imperial water wall. A circular wall of water shot up into the air in time to block the dangerous body of water and destroy both jutsu. As the water came down you saw Naruto hands in the sigh of the snake obviously finishing a jutsu. Water style a thousand needles of death. One thousand droplets of water stopped falling in the air to lengthen and sharpen then sent after Zabuza faster than a normal person's eye could fallow. The needles impaled Zabuza only to find out he was a clone and turned into water. The real Zabuza appeared behind Naruto seemly out of nowhere. This is the end little ninja. Zabuza yelled out as he cut Naruto in half with his sword, as the two halves of the blonde ninja flew into the air he too turned into water much to Zabuza's shock. Zabuza felt something grab onto his feet and looked down to see the hands of his opponent, reacting quickly Zabuza slashed into the water cutting the blonde's hands off as he once again turned into water. Dame it where is he? Water style shark bomb jutsu. In an instant a shark the size of Zabuza jumped out of the water and crashed into Zabuza exploding on impact sending him in hundreds of gallons of water into the air. That was close, if I hadn't summoned that water clone at the last second that would have killed me. Despite getting out without too much damage the force of the explosion was enough to hurt him more superficially but the pain was still there. As he started to fall back down he chooses this moment to start a long chain of hand seals with Naruto doing the same. His feet touched the water both him and Naruto finished the justice. Water style giant waterfall, Zabuza, Naruto screamed out at the same time creating the giant funnels of water of the same size and charged at one another and collided with a big explosion that flooded the shoreline. The two justice push against one another in attempt to kill the other. Naruto screamed out as he pushed more chakra into his jutsu making fiercer and started to overpower Zabuza's, until it broke through and swallowed the missing ninja in the jutsu and battered him around like a rag doll in a tornado. At the end of the jutsu Zabuza crashed into a tree allowing air to finally enter his lugs after what seemed like hours to him. Zabuza looked up to see Naruto slowly walking over holding his sword at his side. Who? Who are you? The prone ninja asked loudly. Naruto stopped in his tracks and looked Zabuza in the eye with the same emotionless face he had at the start of the fight. Where the fate of many lay, I am there to protect the innocent, and destroy the corrupt. The members of Team 7 and Tazuna looked confused but Zabuza's eyes widened in absolute shock. I'm sorry Zabuza but I must protect the innocent. As Naruto raised his sword to cut off Zabuza's head a pair of needles stuck into the mist ninja's neck killing him. Shifting his eyes Naruto and the group saw a ninja in a dark navy blue battle kimono with black hair in a bun and a white mask covering his face with the engraving of the mist village. What is a mist hunter ninja all the way out here? The ninja in question stood up showing his full height. I was tracking Zabuza Momochi and my search laid me here. Thank you for your assistance in this matter but I well handle it from here leaf ninja san. The ninja appeared beside Zabuza's body and was about to pick him up until he found a blade to his throat. And what if I want the bounty on his head for myself? Naruto asked with a dangerous tone in his voice that said if he was to be denied, he would kill the mist ninja. The hunter ninja started to sweat but the mask hid that and he spoke as clam as ever. If you allow me to bring in Zabuza's body I will be sure to have the Mizukage informed and he will be happy to talk about trade options with the Hokage. Naruto seemed to agree with the terms as he gently removed the blade from his neck. 
Without a moment to lose the ninja disappeared in a swirl of leaves. Kakashi pulled his headband down to cover his eye as walked over to Naruto. Good work Naruto you earned your pay for this mission that for sure. Come on let's get to Zuna home team. Kakashi said as he started to walk with his team until they heard a loud thud sound. They turned around to find Naruto lying on the ground not moving. Dame I hope the kids not died, he was useful. Tazuna joked but is really worried. Naruto. Sakura screamed out of worry as she rushed over to the blonde with the other close behind. Sakura grabbed a hold of Naruto as sat him up leaned him against her chest. Kakashi sensei what's wrong with Naruto? She asked holding up Naruto's heavy body. Kakashi kneeled down and took a closer look at Naruto seeing his eyes clenched shut and his hands and legs were twitching wildly. It seems Naruto's body isn't used to moving at such high speeds yet. No big deal and nothing dangerous to his health, a few days rest and he'll be as right as rain. I could use a rest myself as most of my chakra is depleted. Then we should hurry to my house it's not too far from here. Tazuna said getting a nod from Kakashi as he picked up Naruto and followed him down the dirt road. An hour later, Tazuna's house was built out in the water a little ways off the shore but close enough where water wasn't really deep. It was two stories tall in a pyramid-like fashion with the second story was a few feet smaller making it look like two boxes stack on top of another. The pier was beautifully made and the waters were crystal clear. Overall it was a house any small family would love to live in. Naruto was lying on a bed sleeping soundly looking as if he was died with the occasional soft snore as everyone was around him making plans for the future. Is he going to be okay? Asked a woman in her late twenties but looked like she was just exited her teens. She had raven black hair that went down to her mid back. She wore a white t-shirt with black trim and a black dress skirt. She was a tsunami, Tazuna's twenty-eight year old daughter. Oh he'll be fine just needs some rest. Kakashi said from his own bed next to Naruto's as he rested. So what's the next course of action Kakashi sensei? Sai asked as he was reading a book about intimate relationships volume 2. My concern is that missed shinobi hunter. Something didn't seem right about him, some detail I'm missing. Kakashi absently said as he starred at the ceiling. Why would a hunter ninja use sanban needles to kill? You have to be very accurate for it to do damage let alone kill. And the place where he hit. The neck could he have just went for the most open spot. Maybe but why did he take the body hunter ninja are supposed to depose of the body on sight. Sasuke looked up from his spot and at Kakashi. If that's true why did he take the body and not just destroy it. Maybe he just did want to do it in front of genins like us. Sakura said throwing in her two cents. Kakashi got a hard look on his face. Well what of his face you could see of it anyways. That's a possibility but I doubt it. Most likely Zabuza is still alive and that ninja is his partner. The room went deadly silent. But how do you know he's alive and not died you could be wrong. Tazuna said. Kakashi nodded at the bridge builder. That's true I could be wrong but I honestly think he's still alive. Think about where the needles struck it was in his neck, it would be easy to put someone into a death state with the right knowledge. If he was put into a near death state I judge we have a week or so before he is ready for another round. Kakashi sat up and looked at his students. But that also means we have a week to train you guys for another fight. Get ready because tomorrow you guys are going into intensive training to get you into shape. All three genin nodded at their teacher. Out in the middle of the woods. The masked ninja kneeled down to the body of Zabuza and placed a large roll on the ground. Undoing the clips that held it together it unfurled to show many different types of scissors, scapulas, and knives all looking sharp and deadly. Okay first I'll remove the wrapping around the mouth so the blood can drain out and then, the ninja said as the he moved the scissors he chose ever closer but was brought to a halt when Zabaza's hand shot out and grabbed the ninja's hand stopping it from moving farther. Pulling down the bandages around his mouth Zabuza showed his shark-like teeth. Enough, I can do it myself. Zabuza sat up and grabbed a hold off one of the needles stuck in his neck. You know you have all finesse, of a butcher. Zabuza yelled as he ripped out the needle. Carful Zabuza sir, if you pull them out any which way you really well kill yourself. Zabuza pulled the last needle out with a grunt and fixed his wrappings. How long are you going to keep that ghoulish mask on? Take it off already. Old habits die hard. 
The person said as he reached up to the mask and took it off showing famine face with bright red lips. It was very useful for my monkey pantomime routine. Her smile fell into a frown. Next time will you be ready? Zabaza's face gained an angry scowl. Next time I'll be ready, I won't underestimate that boy again. I hope not Zabuza Sama he is very formidable opponent, if you're not careful you could be killed. Standing up Zabuza weakly grabbed his sword and put it on his back. Next time we face someone we'll be leaving in a body bag and it won't be me. Because this time I know who I'm dealing with. Back at Tazuna's house, Sakura sat beside Naruto as Kakashi ordered her to while he slept. She looked at Naruto and saw he was overheating by the sweat pouring down his face. Taking off the blanket she saw he was still in his heavy jacket which was buckled closed. How come Kakashi sensei didn't think to take off his jacket the thing is like an oven. Looking over she saw Kakashi passed out. Right anyways I better take it off. Her hand reached out and grabbed a hold of the buckle and undid them opening it and took it off to show his muscles under his black t-shirt. Before for she realized it she was leering over his body for several minutes when she caught herself, she developed a full body blushed as she hung her head low. When did I become a pervert? Who cares just rip open his shirt and take a long look at his sexy body? Screamed inner Sakura as she gave two thumbs up. I can't do that, she thought as she looked to the side and saw bandages sticking out of his sleeve. Was he hurt? I need to take a look and make sure it's nothing serious. Her shaky hand gently removed his shirt slowly with closed eyes and a deep crimson blush. After getting his shirt off Sakura cracked open an eye for it to drift down Naruto's chiseled chest and abeys. Cha, his body is top grade. You could cut a diamond on that. Sakura felt her body heat up as she closed her legs tighter than they were. Shish shut up, I can't think things like that. Looking back at his abeys she noticed a black, tattoo. She wondered but got to way she took off his shirt to begin with, she gently looked at his arm to see the bandages covered most of his shoulder and down his arm to the middle of his bicep. The weird writing is what really drew her attain as it was in a circle surrounding a symbol meaning level 8. What could that mean? She reached for the bandage and pick up a stranded only to find out she couldn't lift it and every time she tried the writing would glow a little. After several tries she gave and settled for just watching the blonde sleep. Man why can't I get those stupid bandages off? Better yet why are trying to take those off when you know what his packing underneath those pants? Blood started to drip out of her noise at the memory of when Sai pulled of Naruto's pants. Shut up you perverted baka. Deciding to cover Naruto back up with the blanket much to inner Sakura's disappointment and went to get some sleep herself and asked Kakashi about the bandages later. After all everyone else was asleep and it was Sai's shift anyways. Man a good night's sleep will clear my head. Unknown to her inner Sakura had other plans for Sakura's dream tonight. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.